wherever and whenever you are, and welcome back to Phoenix Iwaki. It has been a while, my friends, and we are back after two weeks' hiatus with a wonderful return, a splendiferous return, as we are starting off our charity event, The Odyssey. So called because there are quite a few phoenixes fluttering around the place other than myself, but more on that later. A massive, massive thank you to everyone who's joining us today, and I hope that you are all ready for a very entertaining, exciting, randomly generated session as we will be rolling up everything. The characters were randomly generated, the location and the story that we will be embarking upon will also be randomly rolled for. We have no idea what is about to happen, but it will be fun. So please get yourselves ready and strap in for this now. First, let me say a massive thank you to everyone who has supported us already. Thank you for the donations. Thank you for the hype train that is happening. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, and also, thank you so, so much to our partners. As you can see, arrayed above me here. Okay, we have our wonderful friends at Phoenix Dice, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms, um, Hero Forge, CZRPG, World Anvil, 225 Games, and Realm Warp as well. They have sponsored our um, charity event here and have generously donated lots of very nice prizes. Lots and lots of very nice prizes that you have the opportunity to win. If you are able, please consider donating to our very good cause, Jasper's Game Day, as we are supporting this um, suicide prevention um, society and, and charity. And we um, will be able to give you a ticket for the giveaway for every $5 donated, and that stacks as well. So if you do $10, that's two tickets, and we shall randomly generate who are the lucky winners after our event has finished. There will be dice sets, there are codes for goodies in Idol Champions, there are codes for um, Hero Forge minis, wonderful encounter bundles from CZRPG, um, subscriptions for World Anvil, um, questing journals from 225, and um, setting books from Realm Warp as well. Lots and lots of fabulous things to get your hands on. So, please do jump in, and if you are able, donate to this very good cause. And enjoy this lovely session that we have with all of these lovely players thank you so much everyone for joining me today <laughs> it's a pleasure yes. to welcome you all here hello, hello, hello. oh yeah oh, Hi. thanks for having us oh that's an absolute hello. pleasure thank you so let us quickly um go around the screen here and allow you to introduce yourselves going top left as i am looking at it lauren please welcome Hi, thanks. I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content coordinator over at Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me on Twitter as Lauren, and I mostly post everything that I do there. Thank you very, very much. And yes, um, everyone, we are posting links in chat there, so please do get on over there and give all the follows and all the love there. Thank you. Going down the screen in that direction, the dreaded GM. Hello! Hi, I'm Josh, the Dreaded GM. I'm a professional game master and content creator for all things TTRPG. If you want to see what I do, jump over to the, uh, my Twitch channel uh, or just Google Dreaded GM. Um, my moniker is a pun, so... <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, if you, take it, if you take it the other way, it's very, very in inaccurate name. He's a lovely, lovely person. <laughs> I'm actually really wholesome and lovely. <laughs> I have not anyone who dreads meeting you or gaming with you in any way whatsoever. <laughs> Okay, thank you. And down the bottom there, completing our left-hand side, Kyle, please. Hello, I'm Kyle. I run Play Nerd Allies here on Twitch, Allies Nerd on Twitter. I am, in fact, a DM that is dreaded because my games are brutal. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's, uh, so you can keep your sweet over there. Um, I, I will keep my terror. Over oh, yeah, here, thank you. <laughs> you can find us um, everywhere. You can find Play Nerd Allies. Um, and we actually just started a fabulous charity called the Foundation for Inclusivity in Gaming that helps to lift up all kinds of fabulous uh, streamers of color and LGBT plus streamers. So, yay! <laughs> yes, awesome, oh, awesome stuff. <laughs> and we are looking forward to working with the uh, Foundation for Inclusivity in Gaming later on in this year. Thank you, Kyle. Okay, <laughs> moving across to the other side of the screen, top to bottom, Dot, welcome. 
Hi, everybody. I'm Little Red Dot. Uh, you've probably seen me around Cobalt Press. I'm the Cobalt Press Quiz producer, and uh, I don't know. I'm out there playing games, uh, telling stories, and uh, helping write TTRPG content uh, for lots of different companies. So, unfortunately, I'm under some of those NDAs right now. I can't talk <laughs> totally. about things. But uh, <laughs> go follow me on that link down there, and you can check out all the other things I'm, I'm currently involved in. Thank you so much, and thank you for that donation, 225, my friend. Thank you for all your support. Okay, and heading on down the screen, Mr. Cobb. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Jeremy Cobb. Uh, I'm one-third of the podcast Three Black Halflings, co-host, resident DM. Uh, we're essentially a variety show who talks about, we talk about uh, diversity and inclusivity in gaming, uh, just general nerd stuff, deep dives into different uh, D&D character classes and GM and player tips. We also do actual play. Uh, it's a whole smorgasbord of stuff. Uh, you can follow me at Jeremy Cobb one on Twitter. Uh, that's Cobb with two Bs and the number one. And you can follow Three Black Halflings at the number three Black Halflings on Twitter. And you can find our podcast wherever pods are cast. <laughs> thank you so much. And DMB Town, thank you for that donation, making us up to $120, and we haven't got through the intro yet. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah let's go. Love to see it. Way. Love to see it. All the way. Also, we are aiming really high. Good this kind of use of the word smorgasbord. Mm, yes. Thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> Gold okay. And last but not least, in any way you care to measure it, uh, Patch, please. Hello, I'm Patch. I'm the host of Quest Junkies UK, which is a very, very uh, Yorkshire-influenced D&D uh, <laughs> Yorkshire. channel. I run uh, a homebrew series called the Redania Chronicles, which is on hiatus at the minute, but it's coming back very, very soon. We have some other things in the pipeworks. Uh, pipelines, should I say? That's the phrase. Yeah, we'll go with <laughs> there that. <it> is. <laughs> uh, sometimes you can see John over there playing as a... Uh, a very chaotic bear folk, and sometimes you can see me on this channel playing a cavalcade of nonsense. Normally, <laughs> today is, is no exception. <laughs> Indeed, cavalcade okay. of nonsense is my next. So band another name. gold, yeah, gold, yeah, right? Another gold name, star yeah. word. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. We're having a vocabulary off here already, and we are ready to go. <laughs> okay, thank you, everybody. Yes, I, I am a language teacher, but I teach Japanese school children conversation, so it's not not so much uh, not so much using of cavalcades or smorgasbord and things like that. But hey, okay, so <laughs> let us jump into this now. Those of you who are familiar with this format know that one shot roulette is a slightly chaotic <laughs> brand of game where we do not know what is going on. The players have had a little forewarning for their um, PCs because they were randomly generated and it tends to throw up a rather interesting mess of different things. Poor Jameson Stone in our Sunday Stroke Monday game is gonna be dealing with, I think our first four class build <laughs> four different four different classes to, to juggle with but um yes we we do toss out any single class builds we're not having any of that and we always love to see what comes up with the chaos now i do not just put my players through this i put myself through it too because we are going to be randomly generating the location and the plot points for this one shot right now <laughs> okay so hell yeah <laughs> Um, I am going to go top of the screen here, Lauren and Dot. First time playing with both of you, no, and also, sorry, Carl and Jeremy as well, but yeah, ladies first. Um, and we are going to jump in here and roll for these two things. So, Lorna, if yes. you would be so kind as I reveal the locations chat, ta -da, please roll me a d20. Little D20 coming nice. up. <laughs> Let's roll the match. 14. A 14. Okay. This is somewhere I have not been on stream yet, but it is somewhere I have passed through in my games. We, my friends, are taking a journey to Salt Marsh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Pirate. Okay. Okay. Very salty marsh. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> Salt marsh, which in the wacky verse, in the um, Phoenix Wacky um, canon, is located off, off on the coast, just near Daggerford. Okay, so between between Waterdeep and Baldur's Gate. Um, it is over there. Uh, oh no, people shuffled around. Who'd be shuffling oh. around? <laughs> uh oh, hang on everyone. Let me just 
figure out these cameras for Romania. two seconds. I get Chaos to be Dread DM now. Started. Dread, your yeah. dot now. Yeah, you're dot. Somebody else. Oh, jeez, I'm Winlos. Oh, don't, no, wait. Don't, when I have... switch characters. Oh, no. I don't switch characters. <laughs> <laughs> That would be that would be totally chaotic. Um, hang on, let me sort this out. Just a moment, please, everybody. Let me get this off the map. So, Saltbush, a first time for a on-stream one-shot roulette. Yeah. All right, oh, my yeah, my sons are based in Saltbush, so we may we may come across them in a moment mm, <laughs> as NPCs. Um, okay, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. let me jump over here whilst I sort that out. Sorry, everyone, get the main screen here. Just need to quickly put everyone back in the right spot. Okay. So, let us... Um, quickly, while I'm doing this, Kyle, sorry to put you on the spot. Could yes. you tell us... Oh, tell God, us oh a God. Bit, Tell us a bit more about Fig, please. Well, um, Fig is called the Foundation for Inclusivity in Gaming, and our goal is to help decolonize um, the TTRPG space. Um, by uplifting and expanding the voices of people of color and LGBT people in the space that, as we know, is just statistically speaking, is predominantly white. Um, the best way to decolonize a space is simply to give a platform to the people who have a voice and a perspective that's different than yours. And in doing so, you literally shift the consciousness of an entire space, especially when there are no fetters laid down on the conversations that those people can have. So that is what we, we've got a four step process in place over the charity that we are working to develop to help build confidence first um, by developing a publishable um, piece of a publishable one shot adventure that the foundation pays for all of the art and all of the layout and the legalese there and then hands the IP right back to the creator so that they can use it as a way to gain some notoriety as a publisher, but also a little bit of cash in their pocket as uh, we help them sell that book. And then we move on to things like sponsorships and awards for excellence and things like that to try to lift up people in the space in a real and meaningful, non-performative way. Oh, thank you. Let's thank you so together. much. Awesome. It's awesome. And perfect timing as well, <laughs> as we are all back in the right place. Now, stay put. I modify my life, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, thank you so much. Now, let us jump into this. We have a location. We are headed to the little quaint seaside town of Saltmarsh. And we are going to be playing a story. What story, you may ask? Well, I would like a little red dot to roll me a d10, if you would be so a kind. A d10? Yes, we, my friends, like to use those wonderful people over at Chaos Gen. Um, let me shout out their page here. They have all sorts all right. of generation tables. I got a rifle things. six. Nice. Okay, uh, why are you asking me to log into Twitch? I'm here, I'm in Twitch. <laughs> Are you now? Don't you know Twitch? Are you not live? Are you not live now? I so. How can you be the any less logged in? It's just everybody's been drinking way too much already. Like, <laughs> what on earth? Okay. Bear with me, folks. Why am I not logged in? In chat? I was using the other it. Day, I'm absolutely. I did, I did this because I accidentally opened an incognito browser and didn't realize it for like 20 minutes. And I was like, "Why is nothing logged in? Not my Gmail. Not my." I was so upset. Uh, and then I realized I had opened. I had just uh, opened the wrong browser type. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, oh, those tech goblins. We were just talking and, about that and, in. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yep. Yes, indeed. Pesky tech goblins. That, that's also going to be my next character as an artificer goblin. Yes. <laughs> yes. We live. Uh, yes. Goblin yes. rogue, and I can be a round. saboteur. A saboteur, Thank you, yeah. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> my life's purpose like to it. tear down okay. any technology. <laughs> There you are, my friends. There is, <laughs> there is the uh, homepage there, chaosgen.com. Um, please head on over there. Look at all of their um, interesting random tables. We like to use one in particular, which is a one-shot generator, which comes up with all sorts of interesting things, as some of these people who have played with us before can testify to. Let us head on over to there. Boop, here it is. Now, let me zoom out, because that's uh, not working like that. Uh, boop, boop. Boop, boop, where you can see. Okay, 
there we go. I will uh, clip that there. Now, just to make sure, I, you can pro so I can promise here that I haven't read or any prepared anything. I am just going to refresh this and give us ten more. Boop. Oh. There it goes. Okay, so that has changed. Dot. What yes. was your D10 roll? Got a six. A six. So oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Here it is. Okay. We are skipping the first bit because it says what kind of people the PCs are, but we already know that. But this is the one for us today, my friends. Um, no looking at chat, please. <laughs> looking at, don't look oh. at the stream for a second. It's okay. A virtual gaze, a virtual gaze. It's, although it's very tiny, so you'd have to look pretty hard to see it. But um, here we go. Okay, so this is our story for today. I shall clip that and have it to show all of you later so you can see just what was going on. Now, as I peruse this and have a little think to myself, let us once mm. more go around the screen. And could you please introduce to our lovely viewers and everyone here just who your character is and what are they doing when mysterious lavender mists start to billow and summon them to adventure? Lauren, please. Well, we look in on a gorgeously appointed drawing room in what looks like a very nice house somewhere as we see three figures. The one that we're focused on is a Zverf Neblin, which is a deep gnome. She is currently dressed in a a, a very nicely tailored uh, Billy Porter style tuxedo dress and is currently putting little tiny bow ties on two other characters that are nearby. One is a tiny little, what looks like a corgi, except as the camera pans in, what you see is it's a little mechanical creature. And next to it, already bow tie uh, placed on the mechanical bull terrier is another one of these um, artificial creations because Galley is an artificer barbarian. And while she is incredibly impeccably dressed and finishing putting on the bow tie and putting on her hat, she looks down at these two creatures and says, all right, Reginald, Percival, please. I need you to be on your best behavior. The Count will be very disappointed if we have a same accident like we did last time. Keep your oil to yourself. <laughs> you watch as the little mechanical bull terrier Percival kind of shrinks down a little bit and looks very abashed. And then the lavender mist comes flowing on in and Galley looks around going, oh, well, what, what is, is going on? I, I don't, uh, oh, this is very unseemly. Oh, did somebody burn something in the kitchen again? Um, someone go find one of the servants and then something happens. Fantastic. Thank you. Dredd, please. All right. Um, you are going to hear the sound of clinking poker chips, the sound of the marble on the roulette table, and you're also going to see warm light that sort of bathes this casino room as a halfling um, starts to walk through uh, the casino, what, keeping an eye on the guards or any other secure, sort of security that's happening right now. Um, my character is uh, wearing a fine suit, uh, but underneath you can clearly see that they are wearing leather armor as well. Um, they look like they are trying to sort of infiltrate this place as they look for the last guard that just looks off and then just quickly ducks away behind a corner. Uh, down the end, there are two guards that are uh, guarding a crimson door. And as he approaches, he goes, hello. Uh, they start saying, you're not allowed here. And then he says, no. He takes out his like billy club <laughs> style thing. I think yeah. I am. And he hits the, te the, the side of the wall. And then they come in. You start to see them shuffle and throw fisty cuffs. And he hits one of them, but he takes two of them down. And he pushes into the crimson door uh, where he sees sitting at a table, um, this very pale looking Vlad sort of character. Um, and that's when the crimson mist will start to roll in. No, 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 and then it disappears. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. I just I want to see, I want to hear what these stories are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the continuations of these back stories. Okay, Kyle, please. Scene opens tight on an impeccably manicured hand. You watch as. It gracefully reaches its robed arm to a perfect pastry, a little canapé. You see this hand rise. You notice 
the gold etched onto the edge of the robe. It's immaculate and very expensive. You see pursed lips open gently across green skin and sharp teeth. A bite is taken. Everyone in the room begins to shake, nervous, terrified, in fact. As this orc you see opens their mouth, it says, I asked for a goddamn duck canopy, not a ghost. You are all fire! <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And in that moment, lavender mists come taking them away you see the orc spin incredibly gracefully with a perfect arabesque look at two others in front of them and say who are you and why are you even dressed like that thank you okay and across the other side dots please uh i imagine a scene somewhat similar to Comster's. But it's a little less nice of a casino, more like a crate <laughs> and some dice uh, and a bunch of shifty folk. Uh, but sitting kind of amongst the ragtag group of whoever it is uh, sharing these stools is a uh, Asmar. Uh, they are uh, under a hood, of course, uh, but you can see as the dice finish rolling out, the hood slings back. Uh, and this kind of beautiful woman uh, appears and she goes, I don't think so. You definitely, definitely just cheated me out of this. I'm leaving. And she scoops the, the money up and goes to tuck it into her pocket. Uh, and as she does, she grabs her staff next to her. Her clothes very humble, one might say, and a little understated. Uh, and she goes, come on. And she says up to maybe some birds in the trees and such, uh, as they begin to follow her, much I imagine like a princess, as the purple mist swoop in. And she goes, hey, hey, I said I was leaving. Hey, stop it. What are you doing? No, no, I ain't going. Wait, uh, uh, oh. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay, awesome. And thank you to Elle for that donation. Thank you so much. Da -da, with a fanfare, Jeremy Cobb. <laughs> Uh, so, deep in the corporate bowels of the massive magic tech company, Zimbop Labs, uh, but not in any of the labs, uh, we are currently, as I said, in the, in the corporate sector, uh, specifically, uh, in front of an office, uh, and inside of the office, you see a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, pale-skinned elf, uh, dressed uh, basically like he had just stumbled out of fantasy office space. Uh, and <laughs> he is looking very flushed at the moment, which is unusual for him, not just because he, not because he doesn't get upset, but because he hasn't looked like this for most of his life. And he is saying, no, no, Carol, Carol, no, you can't just give me the pipes. Look, this is HR, Carol. I made a complaint. I was exposed to powerful magics. I deserve compensation. No, Carol, it doesn't matter that I'm an intern. I have rights, gosh darn it. Look, Carol, Carol, look at that. You see your quota there? You know, I used to be a black elf. I used to be a black elf before these energies hit me. You, you see these, this hair? This is blonde straight hair, Carol. You, you wouldn't have had to, to, to hire Demarchilius if you'd have just given me the compensation I needed. I could have been a black elf still. Uh, and in the midst of this, uh, in the midst of this rage, uh, more all this lavender mist starts to swirl around him. Uh, this is, by the way, Zyni Dark Aloro. Zyni rhyming with tiny, not with zinny, uh, who is a third level aberrant mind sorcerer and a second level artificer. And as he looks out and sees the uh, the mist surrounding him, he's like, okay, Carol, this is gonna be another complaint waiting to happen right now. <laughs> and he disappears. <laughs> Fantastic, okay. And patch, please. Okay, our scene opens up to the site of a battle within the slums of a large capital city-like landscape. Wounded are strewn across the battlefield, but our scene focuses on a group of individuals huddled up in the corner of a ruined building, surrounded by an expansive troop of soldiers with rifles at hand. 
And from this group of soldiers, an individual walks forward. Very tall, slender. Quite elegant in the way that he walks. There's a there's a a sense of regality and confidence with each stride. But the first thing we notice is that while he is dressed in much the same sort of clothing as some of the soldiers, uh, there are a few bits that stand out, almost as if they were randomly generated. Um, for example, uh, a very interesting pair of sandals, which look to be really not the right kind of footwear for any <laughs> kind of weather that's not the desert. <laughs> and this is the bit I really don't like, uh, a very horrid pair of pallid leather gloves which have very long, sharp, ivory fingernails at the tips. <laughs> Needless to say, the tension of this moment is interrupted as the figure steps forward and speaks. I am Commander Zarelai of the Alabaster Guard. This little insurrection has ended. Your reinforcements have been terminated. You have no plan, no escape, and no hope. I have anticipated every single outcome of this scenario, and I can tell you with complete and utter certainty that the only way you will live beyond the next 60 seconds is with your complete and unconditional surrender. You might feel somewhat curious to think of a last-minute miracle which might save you, but as a wise person once said, curiosity brings consequence. <laughs> it's about this time he turns round and all the soldiers are looking very shocked and confused at him. And he's thinking, hmm, yes, it was a very inspiring speech. And then he notices as he looks down that he's being enveloped in this purple mist. And as it takes him, he says, inform the Chancellor the situation has changed. No survivors. And we fade to black. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, okay. So, yes, as all of these different um, little vignettes and scenes are happening, these mists start to roil up from the cobblestones or floorboards um, of wherever you are, and they envelop first your legs and then rising higher and higher until you cannot see that scene that was just before you and all the sound fades, muffled at first, and then going to eerie silence. And you are aware of silhouettes. Silhouettes varying heights and uh, types, but moving in the mist as the six of you become aware of each other here in the mists that have uh, rolled up and whisked you away. And as you do so, um, Olaye, um, you are reminded of your patron as a a clump of the mist starts to kind of gather together and swirl like a mist, almost like a genie emerging from its vessel. And rising up out of the mists is a semi kind of ethereal, almost see through form of a forest gnome. A forest gnome leaning on a staff, despite their really uh, insubstantial nature. And on top of that staff is a very angry looking little bird and they seem to be in conversation as they start to appear it's like yes yes i i, I know jimmy that, uh, look we'll have this sorted we'll have the adventurers on their way and then we'll get back to your thing okay just give, give, give me a boat give me a boat everybody welcome i'm so glad that you are here in one piece there was that one time that was very messy um th thank you all for coming uh there was no choice in the matter, but you, my friends, you have been chosen. You are here for a good cause, as we all here for Jasper's Game Day. Please donate if you are able. And you can shift the tides and make a difference on the poor folks of the Sword Coast. A grave threat is endangering the small seaside town of salt mash and oh, if really okay all right well if we're going to do this um reginald take a note to make sure that we tell the duke that we're going to be a little late to the party how much are you paying um there will be great rewards don't you don't you fear um i'm sorry I will, i'm uh, sorry i'm sorry listen um did you say did you say poor people i don't 
Oh, I mean, as in, as in languishing in, in terror and d diabolical situation. They smell nice? Um, a little fishy. Oh, gross. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm uh, less concerned about how they smell and more concerned about the specifics about what we're going to be paid. I'm more than happy to go on any of these errands. This has happened to me before, but I do insist on proper compensation and an actual written contract. I've been taken too many times by somebody just appearing, promising great rewards, and then their great reward was, oh, the feeling that you get when you do a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, probably. Well, it obviously that wasn't that outfit, was it, dear? <laughs> Listen, this was created by some of the finest tailors in my town, and considering we've just met, I wouldn't have besmirched them, especially when I am negotiating on your behalf at the moment. All I need that not, my dear. My father yes. is... My friends, my, my friends, my friends, my friends. This a trick! I, I was in the middle of an investigation! I have struck down my... I'm gonna walk up to this guy. Is this an illusion? And I put, I put my finger into his chest. I was like, I was around his club. Just... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, I... the club will come out. I just tap the club against his chest. It just kind of goes through into the smoke. He's like, please. This is slightly unpleasant. No, uh, no, 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 no. Um, I, I do have to most strenuously agree with the with the woman who, who did mention the payment. Um, I do have a non-compete clause, but seeing as I seem to have been transported to a maybe some kind of alternate reality. I, I don't know if that really applies. Uh, I, I must say, I really do need some kind of payment. I, I think a, a contract, uh, what kind of uh, HR program do we have here as well? Like if, if we say suffer some sort of horrible accident that saddles us, saddles us with terrifying magical abilities, uh, are we going to be compensated for that? Oh, Honestly, yeah. I'm a gambling woman myself, so I just really need to know the statistics around whether or not it's going to be risky or not, you know. Um, uh, with, as with any adventure, there is a certain element of risk that um, the rewards will be um, equivalent to that. And yes, let me start with a pre-payment, if you will. Um, I oh, offer you money up front. This. I like that. And he extends a hand, and some of the mist swirls and solidifies into a ring hanging in the air. And it is... Let me just make sure I get the right name here. A ring on... Hang on, I want to get the proper title so you can add it. Um, Wait a second, so our payment is a single ring? I'm counting at least 55 digits between us all, maybe more. Um, the, well, the... I've got 42 rings right here, dear, and you see just scabs of precious stones just dripping all over their fingers. <laughs> um, and he he, ring, he passes it forward and he's like, um, this will A, be very useful in your upcoming endeavors and will be very valuable indeed if sold on um, later. And you may divvy up the profits amongst yourselves. And of course, upon completion, there will be loot uh, uh, just abounding and all kinds of rewards for you all. Do not worry. But is it dangerous? Yes. Can we have anything that we might want? I shall help us. Do my best, yes, of course. I have will you be able to strip me of my horrifying extraterrestrial powers? Well. There is, in the location I would like you to visit, there is a very powerful druid that um, I think I could in ask to help you out. Yes, yes. Oh. Okay, Can I'm you in. kill my father so I'll be king? Goodness. Um, I would have to uh, have a look at the uh, repercussions and uh, various uh, timelines that could lead it's, to, but uh, it's, maybe... It's, oh. Well, if I'm king, they're going to be fabulous, so... Is he an evil king? Is. I don't think he, he didn't give me my pony that I wanted because he said I already had too many ponies. Are you sure it's just because the pony didn't want to come stay with you? You could never have too many ponies. That's the, true. The bird chitters like angrily in his ear. He's like, yes, I know what you mean. It's okay. <laughs> I'll need something that will help me apprehend a vampire. Okay. Okay. Interdimensional shackles. Well... Okay. For now, this will help you. And he, the, the ring he offers is um, a golden band with a strange brain-like purple gem on the top. Um, it is a, a ring of mind shielding. Oh. 
which one of mm. you may have. <laughs> um, I was already up to the front, so I'll, I'll, I'll look back to see if anyone's going to like say no for me to grab it, but I'll reach out and grab it if everyone's okay with that. I've got too many rings already. <laughs> can, yeah, I have, can I have yeah, who his? Who doesn't have their brain protected already? <laughs> I, 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 need, one, I yeah. need as much protection as I can get. Please, can I have his? If he doesn't want it. <laughs> it was only the one, right? Yes, so I'll grab it oh, and I'll walk mind. over to Z- uh, Zinni and I'll be like, "You go, lad." Oh, thank you, thank you so much. I uh, very much appreciate this. Uh, I, I uh, slide it onto like I uh, um, onto my lapel, mm-hmm. uh, next to like my little lapel pin. I like stick it through there. <laughs> and I'm like, "Yes, uh, this is probably the best." So that just everybody knows, I have it. I was thinking. Uh, and if anybody is is worried, so um, wh- how, where's the druid you said? Where do we go? How do we get started? I would like oh. all of you to visit a beautiful seaside resort called Saltmash. It is a, a small town, uh, but a, a thriving one, bustling um, near um, near Waterdeep and other such um, bustling um, cosmopolitan locales. And um, they are having a spot of bother. The um, druid um, that you um, would like to see is um, based up in a grove nearby the village itself. Um, they live um, up in the um, the sea grove, um, which is a, a thing there. There is a, a fellow there, um, a, a halfling um, called uh, Ferin Castilla. Um, he, he might be able to um, help you out and uh, he has a very um, promising uh, protege, um, a, a, human, uh, a human druid as well, and together I think they can Put their magic. Oh, humans! Oh, I'm so sorry. Quite. Um, and uh, they, yes, um, I think they will. Um, after you've completed your mission, uh, they will be very thankful, and I'm sure they would like to aid you in any way that they can. Um, now, uh, the problem with this town. Um, there's always been a slight problem with Sharkfin Bridge. Um, there was um a strange feeling. Um created across the bridge as people across not not everyone but um for quite some time um there has been a strange nauseating feeling that has been thrust upon almost like a curse as people cross the bridge and it is very strange and but it was just a strange quirk and um, that nobody really understood but recently it has been getting worse and stronger and there have been very very terrible effects for those trying to cross the bridge and it is the main um crossing there um as i put the map here on stream you see there's when you say terrible how terrible exactly could you go into very specific detail i would like to take notes indeed um there are very very um strong headaches that are coming from this and people acting very funnily out of character entirely as these headaches hit doing things saying things that they would never never think of and never say usually apologies when you said terrible as i was i was expecting death and dismay and horror um there was a rather it's really a subjective time Indeed. A survivable, Indeed. basically, is what this sounds like. In- eminently survivable and annoying, but certainly not the ruin of an entire town. But it's escalating. Yeah, it sounds, That's the problem. It sounds... It's escalating more and more, and we are concerned that it will overtake the entire town, and therefore the fishing industry, and therefore some of the best sushi restaurants that I've ever been to in Waterdeep could be in dire Ooh, sushi! Ooh! Mm-hmm. So what I'm hearing from you is that essentially the entire town is filled with incompetent people. Is, um, is is that about right? Not at no all, not at all, but a, a, a brand of, a certain brand of hero is necessary for this kind of thing. So I have reached out, um, borrowing certain powers and bringing you all here to... Oh, perfect. You have heard my brand. So, so you're very well aware of my rider and all of the requirements I'm going to need. You keep talking about these uh, later wonderful things that can happen. And, and yes, the, the druid is, is a nice perk. But can I get some very specifics about what we're going to be paid as soon as we are done with this? You have transported us from what is obviously very different dimensions and realms and... Um, uh, casinos. So I really would like to know exactly what is going on, or else Percival and I and Reginald are all going home. Uh, I would like to cast Detect Thoughts on this forest gnome. 
to try and see because I've been, after having been uh, hired on as an intern in just a really bad situation, uh, I I am trying to wise up. <laughs> so I would like to... Uh, it only takes I, one I, bad internship. <laughs> yeah, well, I ended up with horrifying otherworldly powers. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> as I cast it, essentially what happens is my eyes just recede back into my head. And, and like anybody who's looking directly at my face would see just a plane full of stars. And emerging through it would just be like spectral tentacles uh, <laughs> that would just... And one would fly out and connect me with uh, the gnome's brain. Okay. Uh, just so that I can uh, try and see what his surface thoughts are. Oh, yep. oh, um, I... he, he is genuinely concerned and hopeful and um, frustrated because he's never met a group of adventurers that were so demanding before jumping into the mission. <laughs> <laughs> My understanding is that we were going to be able to request whatever we would like at the end of this quest. Correct me if I'm wrong. Can you get your tentacle out of his face for a minute, please? I'm sorry, I don't know how to make it stop. <laughs> um, so no, no, incompetence. It's, it's right, uh, yeah. no, nothing to hide here. <laughs> oh, this is oh. fascinating. This is also new to you, and Gailey is going to pick up her tiny mechanical corgi, Reginald, and walk up to um, <laughs> Zindark, basically Zinedark. right at Zinidark, right into your face, holding up this tiny... Her homunculus and be like, oh, uh, Reginald, take notes. Let's see if we can figure this out. <laughs> okay. Uh, is 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 so? Does is it like he's dismayed because uh, he, he, it's like basically what I'm wondering is uh, behind the dismay or the confusion is there any like sense of like oh no my evil plan is not going to come to fruition this time because they're being so <laughs> like I can't underpay them oh no <laughs> no he I, seems I can't exploit them. He seems like a genuine force for good and is uh, concerned for the Forgotten Realms in general. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I guess once the spell, or as the spell's still going, I turn to everyone else. I can see them, but they can't see my eyes. They just see tentacles just sort of floating. And I'm like, I don't know, everybody. I'm reading his thoughts and he, he seems legit. He seems on the up and up. And I've I've seen some predatory, uh, some predatory uh, contracts before, and even though there isn't a contract, I, I get the sense there isn't a malicious bone in this fella's body. Anyone who has the power to transport us across the multiverse obviously would have the power to evade your little tentacles, <laughs> as it were. Um, <sighs> hey, must, hey, must that, no, maybe, can we, can we get a team huddle? Team huddle? huddle? Team huddle, everyone, come on, come together, just, come on. Just you oh, wait team, right there, oh, person oh, with the bird. We'll huddle, be right on. back. Okie doke. Uh. Okay. So, I don't think he's gonna leave us alone. No matter no, what we do, we're gonna end up in stinky salt marsh. So the least we can do is go there, get it done, and then, uh, uh well, well, reap the rewards. Uh, I was hoping to find out exactly what those rewards are, but he does seem to be one of those do-gooders who want to just say, uh, great rewards, and then we'll find out afterwards. But I think you, you are know, correct. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull off. I, can, can I just I say that in something? the end, if they don't lay out what we're gonna get, it means we can ask. I'm, yeah, I'm just going to pull off one of my rings and hand it over to Galley and be like, is this enough? You see just a brilliant diamond on the end of it. I was hoping for pure platinum. You know, it, it's a little bit easier. I, I have to oh, actually fine. go ahead and... No, I, the problem is that I have to sell it first. But, you know, if, if you're going to be generous, I'm not going to say no, and she will pocket it. Hell's yeah, good. pulls it, the, but just pulls all the rings off one of her, one of his fingers, and it's just like, take it. Let's stop talking about pay. You've got that now. Let's get this done with. I've got a party to plan. Do you know who's coming over to my party? And he just starts muttering to himself about the whole guest list. <laughs> I, and I'm gonna listen in because I was going to a fancy ball too, and, I, and I'm just I'm taking a look at this orc going. Oh, the the summer this... court is going to be there. Just, oh my god. Windless. Sister, which yeah. can't sit next to me. Yes. Windless. There's something, as you're thinking about the party and how fabulous it's going to be, there is something bothering you just at the back of your mind about the name of this place. Salt Marsh. Salt Marsh. You've heard Salt it marsh. before. And that's when you remember. You have that cousin of yours. Um, god, I hate him. Slightly oh. extended, um, <laughs> you know, interesting yes. side of the family. Um, they're a, a, a Medusa, and they um, 
go by the name of um, LCB Willow Dancer. And yeah. they often talked about the, the wonders of this place and how, how, how a, what a delightful, um, quaint um, seaside retreat it was to, to uh, retire from the, the stress and the tr- troubles of, uh, of court life and social functions and a place to just to wind down and, and relax. And you think maybe if you head there, there may be the chance to meet up with them. And uh, maybe maybe reconnect there. They're always a favorite cousin of yours. Yeah, I which, will. I which will. Like you, only, you only hate them. <laughs> you don't want to kill yeah, them. Yeah, I only just <laughs> just hate. Them. I don't despise them. I just hate them. <laughs> I'm gonna reveal to the group. Look, if we're going to a place, I think it's Salt Marsh. I think that's where she said that she lived. <sighs> Willow Song is one of my one of my cousins through, you know, arranged marriages in the Fey Wilds, and uh, she is acceptable. I really, we're having a beef right now because I told her to turn several people to stone and she refused to do it because she's just a petty, pe- I don't want to get into it. Um, excuse me, I, I, is, is the huddle finished? Um, did you say right. will, Willow Song? Yes. Oh that, God, did she refuse to turn people to stone for you too? Is that the, um, the wealthy individual with the, uh, the large house on the outskirts of town? I mean, She's got a little bit of money and a cute cottage, yes. Um, it's only about 40,000 square feet. I don't know what all the fuss is about. I'm afraid, um, she's gone missing. I didn't, I didn't realize there was a connection. Uh, this is more of a, a random thing. People pulled in from here, there, and everywhere. I, th- there must have been some connection there, which focused on you and, and brought you, um, <sighs> yes. Did she I, call wait, wait, you? Wait. Did she set this up? No, 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 no. It just, just seems to be a coincidence, but, um, you're please. T- you're telling me a Medusa just went missing? Um, the people in the town don't know she's a Medusa. Okay, well, I appreciate her keeping her stuff on the DL and all that, but you don't just walk in and take a Medusa. Quite, which is an example of how grave the situation is. Okay, so the risk may be a little higher than we expected, everybody. I'm going to pull out a whole other, a second ring of fingers, and I'm just going to hand them over to Galley. <laughs> uh, she will just, she's still got her eyes locked on this gnome, but she will just take them. Uh, she's, uh, if, if her mind is being read, she's still expecting to get paid by this other gnome. She's just like, hey, if this one's going to hand me money too, there we go. So you're, you've brought us here in order to take care of whatever's going on with Shockfin Bridge, but now we're also going after this uh, Willow song, or are they connected? Um, um, my thoughts are they're probably connected. She mm. she disappeared as, yes, uh, Constable, I believe um, you have deduced there. Um, she disappeared yes. as this was escalating. And as he's talking, you start to get a whiff of brine and the, and the ocean air, and you start to hear the creaking of ships and the lapping of waves, and the mists start to dissipate, and he's like, well, um, all the best. Um, thank you, Jimmy and I will be back with your rewards. Rewards plenty, I promise. Thank you, goodbye. Okay, bye-bye. And you find yourselves on a slightly busy, slightly bustling dock front, and you see various jetties sticking out with some small fishing vessels, uh, one medium kind of merchant-sized vessel um, just gently bobbing against the uh, pier where it is tied up and people kind of some people looking a bit startled at this sudden appearance of these six individuals um, and um, you know ha- carrying around crates of fish and uh, when less I'm afraid that uh, that odor that was promised does waft over somewhat from a large group of uh, warehouses and things on the docks yes. there and mm, I sure do love Mother Nature's natural smells. Natural <laughs> <laughs> musk. Yeah, Mother Nature's natural musk. It really just hits the nostrils just right. Uh, uh. It's definitely different than the underdark. Uh, Reginald Percival, be prepared for a water damage, okay? Mm. Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> That's uncanny, that is. That's uncanny. I believe introductions are probably in order. I am Constable Consta Goodbarrel. Uh, nice to meet you all. I am a uh, an investigator uh, for for uh, the the City Watch, but uh, doesn't look like I'm in the city anymore. Uh, who are, who are you from? If we're all from all across the multiverse, uh, where exactly are you from? Not that I 
can pretend to know anything about the uh, the multiverse. I'm from a place uh, known as uh, Ambria. Well, I'm innocent, especially if you work for the city guard, okay? Um, my name's Oyea. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not really from anywhere in particular, I guess. Uh, but I made a pact with a genie. That's been fun, so now I call home, you know, in this sack of sand. Uh, so, here we are. Uh, hi. <laughs> oh, I, um, I, my name's, uh, Zyni Dark. Aloro, uh, I'm an intern at Zimbop Labs. Um, I underwent a, a rather unfortunate accident. I've been trying to enter my complaint and, and maybe make a claim. I'm considering legal action if I can get the funds together, but uh, I guess in the meantime, I'm, I'm trying to save these people here and maybe turn black again. I'll reach into my exquisitely tailored coat, pull out a couple of the more expensive rings that Wenlos has given me and hand them over to uh, Zinni uh, to, to help with the fund and say, Yeah, oh. I'll, I'll, I'll see that and I'll, I'll give eight gold pieces to Zinni. I am <laughs> you're so ter off. terribly sorry to hear about that. Nobody should not be compensated, for, especially for those kind of accidents. Um, I, myself, am Gally Mungin. I am a, a world-renowned inventor and... Um, I've gone through this before. Reginald and Percival and I have all been on a couple of these kind of excursions, mostly for those who have a lot of coin to pay and uh, not that much of an interest to go and get their hands dirty. Uh, where I'm from is my own business. Thank you very much. Oh. Yeah. You may all address me, and as, as he speaks, you watch as the sea air just starts seeping into his hair and it just starts getting puffier and puffier and puffier. Uh, <laughs> you may address me as Wenless 17th of the sixth line of the Tri King of Summer Court in Fay Wild. Uh -huh. I am 147,000 in line for the throne. Um, I am not accustomed to either these musks, nor am I accustomed to being taken anywhere without my carriage or my footman. And you see him sort of look around and say, you, you, you uh, peasant. Yeah, hello. You will, you will be my footman. You will carry my things, yes? Does it pay? It does, and he takes off another ring. Do you have change for 10,000 gold? <laughs> Not on me. Well, I, I, I trust that you will get my family. It can be addressed to the summer court. Note it, note it. Third yep. building on the right. Cheers, Governor. Yeah, um, th these ones here? Yes, thank you. Don't mind if I do. <clears throat> See what happens when you actually offer to pay someone what they are worth instead of just saying, oh, go do it for the the feeling that you get in your heart. You know, a little bit of money uh, goes a long way towards respect and getting the things that you want. Yeah, none of this. Uh, the real treasure was the friends we made along the way. Then. That's more like a bonus. The, the main yeah. treasure should be the treasure. The actual ah. treasure. It is. Um Fred. The real treasure was all of the people in front of you for the throne that you murdered along the way. <laughs> Fred, Fred, so um, I'm going to take the day off. Um, I'll be with these fine people. Yeah, yeah, the catch is in, right? It's all good. Yeah, yeah, cheers. I'll make it with you up. Hey, you know what? Since, uh, you know, you're reaping the benefits and all of this of uh, uh, the ring vending machine over here. Uh, can you tell <laughs> me? Uh, we're looking for somebody. What's his name? Uh, 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 Willow uh, Song. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, well, I mean that too. Do you know where Willow Song lives? So, so we're looking for Willow Song, but we're looking for somebody else. Who are we looking for? Um, oh, oh um, Mistress, Mistress Willow Song. Uh, Mistress Willow Song. I haven't, I haven't seen her around town for a while. She tends to, um, you know, um, swan about the place, uh, lording oh, okay. it over us all. But um, yeah, it's been quite a nice break recently. She hasn't, uh, she hasn't been parading the streets or anything. <laughs> Do you know where she shacks up? Um, 
Well, her, 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 um, her mansion, the palatial mansion that she had built, is just on yes, the outskirts. Yes, her cottage. Right. I'm going uh, to step over to the servant and just look square <laughs> in the eye. You wouldn't lie to us now, would you? Why? <laughs> you tell me. Because lying to us is not a recommended course of action. I... I don't think I have the uh, creativity for it. <laughs> That's very Indeed. admirable to be very to be very uh, upfront about your creativity. I'm sorry, um, but we did not get your name. We just kind of uh, skipped over that. Uh, you, you are again? Yes, p apologies. Uh, um, I am Commander Zyralai. I am the Commander, the Commander. head of the Alabaster Guard. And Never heard of it. That means we're doing our job correctly. I heard, a, I heard a word once. Um, jurisdiction. Oh, yes, it's, um, oh I was going to say. She gets spicy now. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, um, if, it, if it pleases, uh, ladies and gents, uh, I, I, I'm Bobkin. Bob Hi. Hello. Oh, okay. uh, Zany Dark has been. Uh, Zany Dark has been like getting choked up this whole time at the sudden <laughs> influx of wealth uh, <laughs> and trying to collect himself. Uh, but he, I, he would look at everybody else and say, uh, as he, he hasn't even put it away, he's just still holding it and kind of quivering. He's like, should we, um, should we start on that case? Uh, where is the, who's the person um, that we're trying to find? I think we broke Zinni. Uh, oh, that's... Here, that, have that... some more gold, I'm sorry. You, oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, it's full ugly cry. <laughs> so, uh, oh you know, if, 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 if her cottage or whatever it is is empty, maybe that's the place for us to call home base until we figure out what's going on. Uh, yeah, there's a spot there. Um, it's um, just um, see... just across the road from Sharpfin Bridge. Yeah, you'll see. You'll see when the when the reach into the deep sleeves of his robes and sort of dig around a little bit and pull out uh, a key. This works for all of my cousin's houses. There's this. I think this would be fine. Oh, no, that's splendid. Yes. Um, are you, are you related to Mr. Swillison? Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, yes. Well, splendid. I mean, I don't, I don't claim it because she is a um, petty little bitch. But, Ooh. um, yes. Noted, noted. Well, um, if uh, if you would care to uh, to follow me, I will lead the way. Okay, please. follow Bobby. Okay, so I, you're... I think heading to this house is a very good idea. I'm hopeful that we'll be able to get this problem solved sooner than we're going to need to um, take up residence anywhere because I, I, I am expected somewhere. I'm hoping to get this, this whole affair very quickly. Indeed, Indeed, I was um, right in front of uh, Giovanni when I got whisked away. Why is Ooh, nobody having Giovanni? fun? Where are you going in such a hurry? We just met each other. If you keep hanging out, he'll keep giving us rings. It's, 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 a, dead, it's a dead giveaway. Come on. I never said I wasn't <laughs> having fun. I just happened to be on a schedule. That's all. Well, schedule, schedule. I, 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 I concur. Uh, I have several interrogations and executions to be hurrying back to, so the sooner we can get this done, Bobkin, the better. Bobkin's eyes go wide. You can skip those. those. You can skip those for the evening. Your commander is going to be at my party. Everyone, everyone, please, please, um, this way. <laughs> oh, yes, we're following you and just talking. <laughs> Let's go. So, you're making your way. I believe they um, call this a walk and talk. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. <laughs> All right, we yep, call lovely. it a sorkin at our, at our labs. It's a sorkin. <laughs> oh, it's a very interesting way of saying that. Oh, I have to remember that colloquialism. Hmm. Yeah, it's Minotaur. It's Minotaur for walk and talk. <laughs> oh, that's good oh, to yeah. know. Oh, oh, Reginald, I recognize the Reginald, accent take now. a note. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Yes, yes, Zinni Dark does speak Minotaur. <laughs> okay, so as as Bobkin with this large bag and baggages of Wenlos on his back is uh, just kind of swarthily moving along the docks there, you're moving across to the west towards Sharkfin Bridge that you can see with the uh, buildings on it crossing the river there as it goes into the bay. Um, you are making your way along there. Consta. Yes. You have advantage. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <Nice. laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for all those donations, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> Question: As we're walking through the town, uh, do, uh, do I see or sense anything strange? Um, 
That... Well, give, give me a perception check. Okay. Let's see, how, how much do you just... Probably not that great, but we, we could try. I rolled a 14. Okay. Um, oh. the... Other times that you've been in fishing ports and docks and areas like this, it's usually a good deal more vibrant. Oh. You know, shouts people like you know people shouting to each other's teamsters and fisher folk and um, all the people that work in the uh, processing warehouses and everything. There's usually much more bustle and things. People here, they're conversing and talking amongst themselves, but in quite muted tones. And mm. some people who aren't in conversation are just kind of almost slightly glassy-eyed and kind of just, just moving about doing daily things, but not terribly okay. focused okay. on, and not like a dock that you've been to before. Right. Hey. Psst. Everybody. You know Why are you whispering? Don't call me a fish connoisseur. <laughs> I'm nothing, but I've been to a few fish towns in my day, and I'm going to tell you something. When you're slinging fish, it is a, it's a, a, a high active uh, 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 activity. This town seems a little depressed. Well, oh, wouldn't you be depressed if you're only making like a thousand dollars a day, thousand gold a day? I mean, I'm assuming that's, bit, that's what they make. That's a bit high. To book be and, high, actually, book and coughs and splutters. <laughs> I'll, be, uh, I'll be honest with you. Some days I don't make any gold, so that doesn't really matter to me. What I'm saying is the activity in the town seems a little uh, off, if you know what I mean. But, uh, I was expecting this. you were going to say fishy. <laughs> That would have been a pun. I'm not very good at that. Uh, uh, jokes. I do enjoy a jade. Very good, sir. <laughs> as we've been walking... <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, Lawrence. <laughs> Gally, please. As we've been walking, I've picked up Reginald in my arms and I've pulled out what, what looks like a little screwdriver. And for the, the last 10 minutes that we've been walking and talking, I'm just very delicately making adjustments all over this tiny mechanical corgi's back and finally go, oh, yes, there we are, there we are. This, this will help. And you hear a click and I've ritually cast detect magic. So I now oh. detect magic for the next 10 minutes. Excellent. Uh, so within 30 feet of me, I can detect all of the magics. Okay, let me let me do this properly. Sorry, hang on. Oh, please. Do do all of the randomless. <laughs> there <Wolf>. you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, excellent. Yes. You're yes. much cuter in person. Please, please take good. overwatch position. And I put Reginald on my shoulder <laughs> and I now have... Uh, detect magic. Going Reginald's, Reginald's head is just like quite eerily just doing 360s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you get really, if you get really close, you hear the occasional ping, like a what we would uh. recognize as a radar ping. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. All of your, so all of your friends are um, uh, illuminated in little different ways, as everyone is carrying something magical. It seems. It's good to know that they are prepared. Um, did, Reginald, anything else that you can sense within 30 feet? And I'll, I can keep this up for 10 minutes. So like yep. as we enter the house, as we get towards the bridge, just mm -hmm. trying to Yeah, as you move west through the town there, as you approach the bridge, um, Reginald kind of does that pointer kind of uh, beagle thing where he like puts a paw up and like points forward oh, and yes. like towards the bridge. Um, and you look over and it's basically lit up like Sydney Harbour Bridge on New Year's <laughs> Eve. <laughs> um, and there is a very um, pervasive um, aura of magic around the whole thing um, and it pulses and sparks and flares in different spots but then goes back down to kind of its background level. Uh, do I get the school of magic of any? It is <laughs> my favorite question. <laughs> I know, I know. I love asking it as a player. I hate getting it as a DM. Yeah. Yeah. I am um... I, while while you're while you're tinkering with that, I'm mm -hmm. just gonna look over, and you notice it's it's very obvious, um, as as Wendless has very little control over like the emotion that appears on his face, um, <laughs> that he's very jealous that you have a cute little thing that he does not have, and you see him sort of pull reach into his into the arm of his robe and pull out a book and just very very quietly start casting find familiar. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Okay. It will take some time. No, okay. no problem. No problem. Yes. More pets. More pets. Um, okay. Um, it is enchantment. Enchantment. Oh. Enchantment. Enchantment. <laughs> yeah, it looks like someone has enchanted this bridge, although there's definitely something going wrong with mm. There's strange it. kind of veins through it of something different. 
Um, not, not arcane magic as such, but some other kinds. You get similar vibes from Zinidark, especially when they did those tentacle things. That kind of, that kind of telepathic, kind of psychic um, style. Yeah, non-arcane magic from a can different I, place. Can I do an Arcana check or a Religion check or a Nature check? Um, would any of those be appropriate? A Religion or a History would work. Okay. I'm gonna Zarelai. try. I'm gonna try. Zarelai is gonna use Divine Sense. Oh, a 20. Okay, nice. nice. Um, you remember in one of Willow Song's tedious conversations about so this tedious. place, just going on and on about this darling little town that she'd found. Um, poor people. She mentioned this bridge. Um, and it, it was it was hidden deep away in the, in the depths of your indifference. And you dimly remember her saying something about this bridge um, with some interesting curse on it, um, which is why she um, picked up this old property on the uh, south side of the bridge and, and renovated so it was livable and you know, bearable. Um, and then uh, she, was, she was curious to be close at hand and try and figure out what was going on with this thing. So, um, I do remember one day when we were having some some middling champagne out on the veranda that uh, Willow Song did in fact tell me that I think this is the bridge. Tell me, tell me, Bobby, is this the bridge? Is this the bridge she was talking about? Because she said it was um, first. Yeah, is yeah, this the bridge? Yeah, that's right, Gov. Yep. Yes. Zara see, Bobby is, knows. Zara is going to use divine sense. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Thank you. So that's um, that fiends is. and. It is. Anything affected by the Hallow spell of the location of any oh. celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet that is not behind total cover. Okay. Six seconds. So. The bridge is behind total cover. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> um, nothing, nothing pings, I'm afraid. I would no. like to take out my, my notebook and flick it detective style and I would like to do an investigation, please. Okay. How, how, how are you investigating? Are you talking to people, looking at the buildings and construction itself? Or? All right, Bobby, uh, come over here. Okay, I want you to tell me everything that you know about this bridge in spare detail. Um, it, 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 has, uh, it has three arches. Uh, it spans the, the, the um, what was it, King, is it Kingfisher River? <laughs> it's right here. King. It is Kingfisher, isn't it? Ah, come back, come back. Yeah. Okay, it spans the Kingfisher River where it comes into the bay. Um, the houses um, atop it are various small businesses um, that have um, suffered greatly um, because nobody wants to cross over the bridge at the moment. Uh, some people are swimming, some people are taking little rowboats because crossing the bridge is horrible. Okay, okay, okay. Well, uh, is there any uh, corporations or conglomerates that may perhaps own those businesses? Um, well, there's there's a tavern uh, in the in the middle. It's part of the uh, the pub crawl that we like to do um, from time to time. Um, What's the but, pub crawl? Um, you're visiting various establishments and take partaking of beverages and then trying to swim out to the uh, ancient stones on the island. Yeah, that sounds very dangerous. Yeah, we just, we just had this year's event. It was interesting. Um, the uh, the winners, they were a visiting group of adventurers like yourselves. Um, they, they headed out there and, and they got themselves into a bit, of a, a bit of a scuffle out on the island, but they came back and they seemed uh, relatively Adventures. happy. Adventurers went out to an island, got into a bit of a scuffle. Was this before or after this curse was laid on this bridge? And that Willow Song disappeared. Oh, well, and that too. The nauseating effects um, have been occurring here um, at the bridge um, for uh, as long as anyone can remember. Uh, just recently, it's been uh, intensifying. Don't know, that's a big word. Zinny Dark, um, I can't help but notice that the feeling and um, the magical sense that I and uh, my companion here are getting from this bridge resembles your magic in quite an interesting way and i i remember you talking about how that was not something that was uh welcome to you i was wondering if if you might be able to feel anything with this bridge i, I feel like there's a connection here for your magic uh okay uh, uh, uh zadie dark is going to step forward he's got like 
essentially he does it rather than an arcane focus he has his tinker's tools he's essentially been trying to teach himself uh how to be an artificer in order to try and reverse what happened to him and he has the very device the 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 pipes of haunting it's all hooked up in there uh and he's been trying to like experiment on in, hooked up to his tinker's tools uh and he will step forward and try and i don't know what i should do should i roll an arcana check uh i can cast detect thoughts on the bridge if that's a possibility, or mind sliver, or something, there's any, there's a whole array. You tell me, Zia, what should I, what should I do in order to try and connect with this bridge's magic? Please give me a... thoughts on the bridge, please, please. I want to know <laughs> what the bridge is thinking. Yes. Give me an yes. Arcana check. With... Oh, thank you, Wizards, for that. Um, give me an Arcana check with um, your proficiency at it, if it's not already. Um, Considering with, with... I'm. Mm. I'm helping this baby artificer out. Can I can I offer the help <laughs> action and give him advantage? It, it doesn't even have a homunculus or an eldritch cannon or anything, but yes, I, absolutely. I know, very. Oh, it's, it's not even holding the... the listen, listen, uh, hold the screwdriver a little bit more like that. There you go. Okay, uh, there you go. Now okay. give that a try. Okay. okay. So yeah. it's a, a proficient art kind of check with advantage, please. Okay, I just rolled, and that's a 14. Okay, so... Excuse me, sorry, let's quick hydrate there in chat. Um, so, if, um, yeah, as you as you reach out, how does this look? Does, do we have more tentacles involved? <laughs> um, I think it would be like, uh, not coming out of my face or anything, but anybody looking at my hands would no. notice that, like, suckers start to, like, <laughs> like open up over my hands uh, and uh, connecting all the way across the, the, uh, the Tinker's tools and to the pipes. Uh, and through the pipes, you'd start to hear like wind blowing through, but what's coming out is not like faint music, but it would be like, just like coming through there. Uh, <laughs> what language is it? <laughs> oh, I don't know, but everybody hears it begins to question their sanity. So everybody just, just don't listen if you, if you can. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I do speak deep speech and I'm all yours, so. <laughs> Uh, I oh I think yeah I guess you would Deep probably speech. understand what it is. It's some sort of a horrifying like uh, curse mixed in with like a shopping list. <laughs> <laughs> fabulous, wow. fabulous. Okay, so as the as dead you will shown... rise as soon as they get some bread, <laughs> the bread and eggs. <laughs> Don't forget the milk. All <laughs> of the eggs. <laughs> we Why does it switched... sound like my We recently switched to almond <laughs> milk. <laughs> We're going vegan in this house. So you reach, you All reach the out and free your bread. tools. <laughs> absolutely, I absolutely just oh. everything they say is followed by gluten free. One of one of, <laughs> one of the stores, one of the stores on the bridge was this fantastic little health foods thing. I, I hope I hope you help them. I really hope you do. Them. <laughs> They'll have everything you need. Um, now, as you reach out, you feel the faint thrumming of the energy and the and the the effects that are making their way through this structure you can't quite connect and until galley says oh, oh, oh no just hold it like this and just kind of shifts the tools just to that perfect angle to resonate with the energies of the bridge and with a boom, you connect with the bridge uh oh, there is a whoosh of mental energy, much like when you first contacted the source of your powers, non-studied artificial powers, and you gasp as <gasps> swirling images, motes of light, tendrils, and all kinds of patterns, chaotic, n n no geometry, no, no order, no design that your artificial mind is used to swirl around you. And you are hit with that nauseating feeling and a sudden burning pain in your temple as this headache hits you. And then you hear the voice. Oh, hello. This is new. 
You are different. You have reached out to us. Come. 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 And you feel a strong pull towards the bridge, towards a large recently renovated mansion on the south bank of the bridge, diagonally across from you. One that Bobkin seems to be leading you in the direction of. Uh, uh, I guess all of the, the suckers which have like popped up and have been like pulsating, uh, they produce little tentacles of their own that start just flying around wildly and start going, <laughs> ah, oh no, oh no, ah, ah, what is it? Make what it stop, it? make it stop, what? make it stop. What is it? Uh, uh, yes. Come uh, on, do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, it's like the, what, Pippin with the Palantir? When he's like, ah, and you have to like, knock the, <laughs> knock the tools out of my hands. I'm like, ah, ah, there's, there's something from that house and as I point like more tentacles just extend out of my head and start like uh, waving in the direction of the house I'm like there's a presence I, I heard a, a voice it was saying that, that the people called to it and and now it's it, it's calling for for me and for us maybe to, to go there it's 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 where Bobkin was leading us um, I'm sure you're just reacting to the terrible color scheme here Bobkin <laughs> uh, yes go I'm going to come over with my billy club and I stand as tall as I can for the halfling and I'm going to slap it in my hand. Now yeah, oh, you wouldn't be uh, doing anything unsavory, would you, lad? Uh, and I, again, try and intimidate him. Um, and then... I am kind of indenturing myself to that horrible half-fork for the sake of money, which is quite, hor quite horrible. Um, Does which half-fork would that be? Uh, no, nothing, up. Oh, everything nope. ship shape here. Good. Uh, yeah, I haven't dropped anything. Yeah, all okay. good. You were thinking about that house thing. Ah, uh, you not tell this. I'm gonna just like rest my 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 billy club on mm. the on the the chest that he's holding. Just push on it ever so slightly. I think there is a, uh, a little bit more uncomfortable. An intimidation like check an intimidation. lurking in there. Yes, with with uh, certain uh, benefits that that uh, little magical club gives you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna cast. I'm gonna cast mage armor on uh, Bob. <laughs> this is my. This is my <laughs> um, I think it needs club. <laughs> you know, it, it came. It comes from a, a very special place. If if you want to let us know where it comes from. Yes, it comes special as book. many of the magical items in today's adventure do from a certain Cobalt Press book <laughs> yeah. called uh, Vaults of Magic. Yeah. <laughs> There it is. Hey. That's the one. Oh I've, I've, I've got mine right so up bad. there. I know. Look, it is. So good. Ooh, so, so good. good. Um, I just, okay. So I don't know. I, I need to. I need to try and read through it all. I'm sure there's so many hidden gems just hiding in there. So, like, so, many, so many good ones. <laughs> Amazing. Sorry. Um, yes. So my start. my intimidation will be a twenty-one. Okay. <laughs> just trying to make him uncomfortable. I'm not trying to knock it out of his hands. It's just like. A little you're, bit of weight behind his You're not sure if it's the intimidation or the weight of Wenlis's baggage, but his knees are shaking as he stopped moving here. He's like, um, I don't know what you make of. Um, I've. It's starting to crack. I, Go on, just let it out. This, as this happens, Wenlis is just going to step forward and be like, if you want to do something terrible to one of your own servants, you may do so, sir. I do not believe I gave you permission no, to master, touch my hireling. Master Windows, Master Windows. Apologies, I, I, I've led you astray. Um, I, I might have been leading you into danger. I, I just thought you could help. I thought you could help, Saltmarsh. Um, just insanely quickly, like faster than you can blink, suddenly there is a, there is a perfectly beringed hand around this guy's neck. <laughs> and without looking at them, he just looks down at Conster and says, this is how you intimidate an inferior. He will tell me now exactly what's going on, or I'm going to end his life. Oh, but <laughs> you don't want him to do that. He, he's, a, he's a wild animal when he gets mad, Bobby. 
I okay. can't stop him. Look. I can't stop him. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I know. It's just that... It's, it's not just Madame Willowsong. Everyone, everyone that's gone missing has gone missing from that household. Servants, um, gardeners, um, bed pan turners, um, the, the, the lot of them. Um, Adventurers, perhaps? Ones uh, that you may have led up there before? No, wait, 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 no, wait, not me, go. Wait. Everybody? In the house, yeah. It's empty. And you were saying that whatever the, the, the not great feeling is, uh, whatever your, your your tentacle hand saw, it's coming from the house? Yeah. It must be interconnected. There's something in there. I think it's an entity of some kind. Maybe maybe like a person who, who, who wants us to come in there. Okay, now, now, you know, I know this is a personal question and all of that, but dare I ask what kind of magics you're interning for? Oh, uh... The the magics are they stretch all over a whole gamut actually and actually I'm not even interning with the magic I'm in, I'm interning there for the advertising division I was just there watching a test when it happened I was it was on these and I hold up the pipes uh, I say these pipes uh, have some kind of otherworldly connection that allows them to channel horrifying energies and terrify people on a truly fundamental level uh, pierce the minds of those around them in order to induce uh, horror and terror. Uh, I I don't know how to work them myself, uh, but something went horribly wrong with the experiment, and and I saw every moment of every person's life, including my own. And I don't remember what happened, but I just know I saw everything. And when I came out of it, I looked completely different, and I could do this. Uh, and I cast um, I I cast uh, dancing lights, uh, and. It's what appears is uh, little versions of me just dancing. <laughs> ah, yes, it's a successful advertisement then. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to make that stop either. It just kind of happens. <laughs> oh, just gotta no, let it run. It? Okay. All right. it, it'll end eventually. It, it doesn't last more than like a minute or two, but. You see, uh, you see Tonsters sort of like bopping along with un, un, unwittingly. <laughs> no, please, <laughs> everyone, could, please, could you, could you help? This, this poor town, we're at a loss. We're at a loss what to do. Why trick us though? We're here to help, but we 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 were upfront about that. I you didn't need to trick us. We would have went up there with you just t talking it straight, lad. I've I've never met folks as brave as you. Everyone else would have turned tail and fled. Well, we got tails. Please. None of us right. has tails. Oh, well, except for the pooch. Well, well, and only one of them. Uh, Percival keeps his his tail. Reginald uh, got docked because it was just he was wagging it way too much. Yes. Dog's dangerous. Exactly. Can I, can I do an insight check, please, um, on Bobby? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm gonna walk up to to Zany Dark and just quietly sort of say, uh, when this is over, I might have a job for you. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh, well, thank you. I, if it's as long as it's better than my last job, I, I, I'd be very interested. Uh, do I need to submit a resume? No, you've already interviewed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this seems very above board. Nice, <laughs> Consta, how'd you um, go? That'll be a thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Um, he he seems terrified, and you're fairly. I mean. You know, Rowdy's Rowdy's club has never um, seen you astray before, yeah. and you're pretty you're pretty sure he's he's telling the truth now, and he's just he just wants right. he just hopes that you will help the town. I think the lad's just a bit frightened. Anything else that you know about that house or what's been going on in it that you think might be interesting, useful? Um, anything even that you don't think would be useful, because then we can decide for ourselves. Um, well. After the, uh, after the 16th person disappeared, nobody in town goes near the place. 16th? Surprised it took 16, yeah. but at least eventually the town learned. Okay. We're, um, we're, we're a curious bunch. <laughs> yeah, could I ask why? I have no idea how I know this. But why haven't the, uh, the owners, the lords of the land not come up here and trying to help? Send um, a wizard, perhaps, or... There was some... Why does it take a multiversal entity to send uh, aid? Oh, our, our, our druid, um, 
our druid uh, Ferin Castifar out out in the grove in the in the sea grove. He um he contacted someone he said who could help uh, a a forest gnome friend of his. Mm. Oh. I yeah, think we personally. Met oh, so you're should... the aide. We are saved. Blessed be. Come on, let's go. Oh. And he starts running. He's like you can see him like gird what? himself as he goes onto the bridge. He's like. No, no, no. Hold, Bobby. Hold. What? Please, it's very uncomfortable standing on this bridge. <laughs> I'm sure you can manage it. There's, look, I think we should go and talk to the druid immediately. If he has the power to summon a multiversal being to summon us, they might have a bit of aid um, before we step inside what's obviously is, a trap. Why hasn't he done something if he's so stinking powerful? Oh, it's not so much that he's power. He's he's very. <laughs> It's very busy. There's um, there's a periton egg that's um, hatched recently, and he's trying to deal with that. It's um, I don't know if you've seen any young peritons. They're very difficult to deal with, trying to keep trying to eat the hearts out of people. <laughs> he's got his hands full. Oh, I'm very interested in that. Can we see that? <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna later, turn later. around, leave the bridge, go check out this this druid that it's too busy to save people because he's <clears throat> watching something. Um, yeah? Uh, listen, this is all very no normal for what I've experienced. The vast majority of people who seem to have the power to be able to summon those of us who actually can do something about the problem have way more money than time, but that doesn't give them power. And so we can go talk to this druid if you want, but my guess is that their power is in their connections to get us. Uh, oh, so they're just a court here then? They're not Pretty much. Uh, no, I, I think I think we're not going to find out any more from this druid than we are from um, your your employee. Mm. Oh. They're middle management. Oh, worse than that, worse than that. <laughs> At least middle management <laughs> sometimes has some answers, but no. Mm. I think they're HR. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> and bad HR at that. I feel like at this point we might as well just walk into the trap that we know is a trap <laughs> and deal with it and get our money. And then you can all go off to go do your uh, interesting business, I believe. Um, okay, but, but the question is, how do we cross the bridge? Uh, quickly, I'd imagine. Ah, it's Percival, <laughs> Reginald, let's go. And I will just start Oof. marching across the bridge with both of my little uh, mechanical... Oh, oh. Well, Homunculus and uh, Eldritch Cannon Force Ballista. <laughs> yes, okay. the two of the two of them yeah, are very comfortable. They're just like dum 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 dum, just going across. Um, mm. Everyone else, I'm afraid, needs to make me a Wisdom saving throw as you step onto Great. the bridge. Wonderful. Okay, is how, this how against? Is... Sorry, Go ahead. I was just going to ask: Is this against Coming? magic? It is a magical effect. Yes. Awesome. Uh, I have advantage. Nice. Necrotic or radiant? Well. I'm afraid not. <laughs> Okay, great. Um, right, 17. How long is the bridge? It is, um, I'd say, like 200 feet. Ah, yeah. Uh, is it? Is this a charm effect? It is not, I'm afraid. A frightened okay. effect. <laughs> I'm afraid not, no. Oh, yeah. This is what happens you get a bunch of multi -car <laughs> <Yeah>. characters. <laughs> like, is this? 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 Is it this? Is this? Is it? Uh, wisdom saving throw, you said? Yes, please. Okay. okay. 17 for 17. Tiny Dark. 17. Okay. Seventeen for me too. Ooh, okay, right. Well, my dice appear to be on your side. <laughs> yes, Z Zil Raleigh. <laughs> it's a funny story. Uh, I had advantage on this roll. Yes. I got two nat uh -oh. ones. Oh no. <gasps> That's been happening a lot lately in all the games that I've been playing in. Wow. Zil Raleigh. Excuse me. Two nat ones on two d twenties. You say? That's right. Pat, you know what you know what that die. means, don't you? Which is why you're smiling so much. <laughs> what does two nat ones and two d20s mean on Phoenix Uwaki? It means things are about to get hectic. <laughs> no. Wild no, magic it doesn't mean surge. An 11. <laughs> That's what? a wild magic surge, I'm afraid. Um, uh, Zilrele, what is your main class? My main class. Yes, of, of, of the of the few that you have. It is warlock. Warlock. Thank you. Okay, so going over to the warlock wild magic table. Please roll me a D100. Now, everyone that got everyone that got more than a 12 takes two psychic damage. Anyone who got less than a 12 takes five. 
That was on 3d12. I got five. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh boy. So I take, I take five because I got under 12? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, five, half two if you got 12 or more. Okay, I'm beginning to see what they were saying about a headache. I know. I, I need a massage. It's very unpleasant. It's like right behind my I temple. I have tentacles just massaging my tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fantastic. I've got, I, I'll, I'll head over to Alairi and I'm, let me see your hand, dear. Will you get? Will, will you extend it? I will extend. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was talking to Alairi. Yeah, Alairi. The ones that said they yes. had it. Yeah. Alairi, 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 Alairi. There's a little. There's yes. Fabulous glasses. Because they said that they had, they were hurting, they were getting headaches. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, you know just right behind this right eye. Yeah. It's just a little pressure. Huh. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab your hand and I'm going to hit several pressure points. Oh, and oh, yes. oh, relieve oh, some of the tension. Oh, oh. Thank you, monk. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> there you are. All right. Oh, that's <laughs> okay. Um, Zulale, what was that? D100. It was a 14. A 14. Ooh. Okay. Wow. Nice. For the Good remainder gentle. for the remainder of this adventure, you, do you have Eldritch Blast? Yes. Your Eldritch Blast cantrip knocks targets prone whether it hits or misses. Oh! <laughs> oh. oh. Nice. That is to wow. our, uh, that is to <laughs> our advantage. That's lovely. Yeah. Yes. Very good. So as you are crossing Very the bridge, around about the midpoint, as you see a couple of villagers who do not like to swim or cannot afford a little ferry crossing, um, are kind of rushing across, clutching at their temples, trying to get across the bridge here. Um, you can see this bridge is clearly very old. It clearly predates the town itself. Um, and you uh, feel terribly... I'm afraid, um, Wenlos, you feel particularly bad, as um, as do you, Zinidark, as I'm afraid elves and fey folk feel particularly affected by this. Um, oh. And, yes. Oh. <laughs> you... Uh, unacceptable. <laughs> You see an unmanned oxen cart coming by and moving across the thing as, as, its, uh, as its driver is swimming across the water below. Um, and um, Zurale, as you reach about the midpoint of this bridge, strange wisps of energy, not unlike the mists that brought you here, rise up and twirl around you and gather around your wrists like little um, bands of power, seemingly giving you an interesting boost there. <laughs> well, this is going to be rather fun. <laughs> so, so yes. I uh, I did a real quick con constitution check to make sure I could maintain concentration on mm -hmm. my tech magic, mm -hmm. which is funny Thank as you. I rolled a natural 20, which is nowhere near hey. what I needed. But so I still have to tech magic <laughs> sure. up. So I'm, uh -huh. I'm holding Reginald. Has anything changed about the bridge? Now that I'm on it, do I sense anything else? Um, the same the same magic and uh, enchantment and uh, other psychic elements are stronger here. Um, mm. And you can feel them kind of like almost bleeding out from the bottom of the bridge into like almost like roots of a tree, just like going down, to, down into the riverbed and below the ground and extending in the direction of that mansion that you were told about. Now. Oh, yes. These are definitely connected. I can feel it now that we're on this bridge. Oh, oh <laughs> that is not pleasant, but interesting. Indeed. I think the source is the house, which means maybe if we fix whatever the problem is, the bridge will just poof, get better. Maybe. Maybe. So you quickly Does make your way. anybody have a fireball? Can we just get rid of the house? <laughs> I think maybe oh, just... I love that. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, technically... There's nobody in the house, correct? So we don't have to worry about anyone. If we just Even destroy... if there is, Will of Song is just a monster. So let's get rid of her. Well, Again, that's that's unfair. I Gally, haven't met her yet. Gally, you're very you're very aware of the the roots of this evil feeling going down beneath the ground, beneath Watch the me. house. Mm. I will have to turn a blind eye because arson is a crime. So. <laughs> okay, but what if it's an accident? Um, well, so I'm turning a blind eye. I'll, I'll look the other way, as it were. Bob, and you Bob know, can... so, maybe the house is is, is just uh, uh, hiding the real problem. You know, uh, it, it seems to be coming from underneath it. Uh, yeah, if no, we're in the house, you know, 
Now that we're getting closer, I do feel like, unfortunately, burning the house down will will just be a temporary solution to an ongoing problem. But, oh, but maybe but a it's fun a fun one. Uh, absolutely, and and maybe it's the um the final step that we need after we are done with whatever's under the house. Hmm. Uh, can I do as they keep mentioning underneath? I'm assuming that like we can see sort of the the cliffside that the the houses are on. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, can, is there is there anything indicating any sort of caves or anything like that? Um, not along the riverbank, no. But you do have one interesting little insight. Um, <laughs> Willow Song, bless her, um, despite, you know, well known for her poor test uh, in color palettes, and yeah. it's just also so predictable. Every structure she's built, every, every house that she's um, made for herself, of, of the, uh, you know, the several that she's built up around the place, there's always a drawing room with a bookcase with the fourth book on the second shelf that pulls out to reveal a secret passage behind. I know, it's so, it's so stupid. Every time she comes to one of the parties, <laughs> she talks about how she's so clever, and then in every one of her houses, there is this book that says, my diary, do not open. And if you pull that book, then the secret passage opens. It's just... Oh, uh, <sighs> yeah, the, the hidden secret passage with the book, yeah, yeah, okay. There is yeah, something it's... charming about that kind of old school mentality, but certainly at least changing up the book would be useful. I well, might call it vintage. Very. It, it hasn't come back around again, though, so it's still very old. <laughs> yes, yes. It'll be old for the next thousand years. Well, then it sounds like we know how to at least get down there. If I had a, a, a secret book on a bookshelf that opened to a secret tunnel, it's going to go under the house. Oh, she I... might have canapes in the kitchen. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Now, as you uh, make your way across there, Bobkin has already reached the other side and is, is breathing heavily and, and uh, looking very satisfied of escaping the effects of the bridge. Okay. And he's like, um, actually, Constable, um, Arson's fine in Saltmarsh. Oh, you just go around burning each other's houses and, and well, places I of mean, business and it's fine. Not, not on the regular, that would be too uh, much of an inconvenience, but it does tend to uh, lead to a, a renewal, a rejuvenation of the town. <laughs> So we, we just go around burning everything, it's fine, there's, there's no, there's no <laughs> laws against this. No, but there could be repercussions. Yeah. Right, Usually... This is a very strange plane of existence. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so... it's kind of like the, the, the circle in nature, right? Like, sometimes nature just catches fire and burns down the I new get trees that. I understand that, but we're in civilization. We're not, oh, we're yeah. not, oh we're I not see. Well, let me tell you something about this plane. Just because we're a civilization does not mean we're civilized. <laughs> oh, I, I get that. I, that tracks. Uh, a lot I've of said it many times. <laughs> There's been a lot of truth okay. spoken today, and I, I still have an appointment to make, and I will walk up mm. to the door of the house. <laughs> oh, yes. a knock? So yes, you go over, make your way around, and uh, yeah, you reach up, knock. Knock on the doorway to the this I'm rather. I'm not knocking. There's nobody inside. I'm opening the door. <laughs> oh, that's right. I've got the key. I've got the key. We're just breaking and entering is fine. It's such a strange point of existence. It's not breaking and entering. I've got a key. Good Lord, keep up. Oh. It's I will. I will try the door mostly for an investigative purpose, just to see mm -hmm. is it unlocked. But ex I'm like half looking at one Lowe's, ready to <laughs> let yes. him. Do yes. the key thing. You reach forward Wait, and... Do you hear that? Oh, someone's in trouble. We should go in. I heard a scream. <laughs> ah. Ah. Yeah. I see you. The, the little monkey that tries you. to help. It's like, it's like... <laughs> woof. Woof. <laughs> oh, yes, Reginald. I'm sorry. What? And he kind of looks at Consta. <laughs> 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 I know, I like him too. I do I do like this group. It's, it's they're very they're very amusing. Does the door open? This is this is my curse with these one shots. I, I want to play full campaigns with every group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so um you uh, reach up and try the door and it eerily swings open. Unlocked. Hey, <gasps> Inviting, welcoming to the dark interior. I think it wants us to coincide. This is not a good sign. I mean, it's a good, it's helpful, but be everybody be careful. It had a scary voice. It 
I was I can't be sure, but it was almost as if like you put a scary filter on your voice, like you cast prestidigitation and just make your voice sound real bassy and ethereal. It was that kind of a it was that kind of effect. <laughs> oh yeah, I've Look, been there, you've done got a, that. You've got a scary face. Oh. We're not we're not complaining about you with your tentacle face. <laughs> not I mean, tentacle right now. <laughs> a tentacle just slithers back up under my hairline. <laughs> Um, okay, so Wenlos leading the way, and you kind of sigh to yourself to the because the interior, the interior of the house is exactly the same as every other hovel that Willow Song has erected in her so-called palatial grounds. She's um, so creative. Oh. <laughs> and uh, you make your way to that drawing room, and oh look, a bookcase. I wonder what will happen. <laughs> Which I book is it? I do still have detect magic up. Uh, have I sensed <laughs> anything as we've entered the house? Anything? Um, not in the house, no, no. There's just that, there is that pervading um, sense that's from the bridge, but it's down below. It's not in the house itself, it's beneath beneath the foundations, it seems. Okay. Um, the, the first thing, uh, the first thing Wendlis is gonna do is, Wendlis just, um, he raises his hand and casts light and what you see is that this light sort of comes up beside his face, and then you see him sort of like angle his eye to look at it, and he just sort of like taps it, and then taps it again, and taps it again, until he gets this nice warm glow on him. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, that's fine. And then goes, grabs the diary and says, let's go. <laughs> Positively radiant. I say to the other ones under my breath. <laughs> Galley kind of turns oh. away from it, tr trying to hide a little bit, but she's she's trying to not look directly at the light. As I have superior dark vision up to a range of 120 oh, feet, so ah. she she, she, oh, she just boy. kind of she moves Reginald from one shoulder to the other and Reg and and mutters under her breath, oh, "Reginald, would you please go into uh, dark vision mode and block that? Thank you." Just like raises a paw. <laughs> but, but and it's just that, that little, just a little tiny mechanical corgi homunculus, just always, just right there. Oh my god! Oh my god! Is it like a, is it like a disco ball effect? Because he's made of metal that, like, like now there's lights just shining all over the room. <laughs> that, that's a different Absolutely. mode. Uh, that, that, that's a different the, the shininess mode. I can, yes. I can do that, but that's for parties for later. Yes. Um, yes. I cast I dancing the... lights again. And all the little dancing me begin <laughs> disco Constant dancing. Starts uh, popping as well. Poor um, Reginald has like three paws up trying to block <laughs> all of the lights going on uh, now. I'm just like, very good, Reginald. Very good. Oh, Percival, we're going to have to work on your perching abilities. I'm getting, I'm getting yeah. Toby Maguire gif images in my head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you uh, step in, there is just a, there's always, always with Willow Song, it's always the same thing. There's just bottles of champagne lined up right here i'm just gonna grab one he's like everybody have some champagne if they'd like and i'm just gonna pop it open real quick Ooh, and just bubbly. take a little sip this is yeah this mm -hmm. is her secret cellar like behind the secret door <laughs> surprise surprise and this um, is why she has a secret door for her her, her champagne oh god oh i wish it was champagne it's just sparkling white wine <laughs> and she um she seems to have uh, branched out almost maybe inadvertently this time uh, in the back of the cellar there is a jagged hole in the wall that leads into a natural tunnel that oh, curves, well, that's a choice. curves and slopes down it is well my goodness I, I suppose she's going you know art deco with um, this I believe the last book she read talked about dwarves who have dug too deep can I roll an insider nature check to figure out how this hole was made, if it was a creature, or mm. also, is it leading to the water, or like deeper, like away from it, in terms of direction, like with this dump mm. out over the-, okay. the Give me an investigation um, check, please. Oh, okay. I was hoping to use nature, but okay. Um, um, I'd like to do a sweep for Thieves' Ant as well. Um, oh, mm, okay. A 19. Nice. Um, you see where there is a- it's kind of a, almost a soft clay-like rock here near the river, um, in the near the banks of the river here, and there is slightly disturbingly um, lots of scrabble kind of marks, almost like fingers were clawing at this, trying to claw it open, 
and there are traces of blood okay. where it's been right. gouged away. Um, like like people like try to dig through this with their bare hands. Okay, so the first thing I do is yo, you see me get on all fours and I like I, I laugh over and I like taste the ground. And I'm like, okay, so this tunnel it's gonna lead out uh, towards the river, but I have some more disturbing news. Uh, there, 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 and there is all blood from the nubby fingertips of whoever he had dig this wall at. Oh. So, you know, I know your cousin's not much of a decorator, but she seems to be a bit destroyed. <laughs> well, I can't imagine that she would do that. She's, I mean, she's not the brightest bulb, as it were, I mean, but... she did choose sea green for her tapestry. Look, I, I just, I can't, I, and you watch, like, like a pseudo panic attack start as just <laughs> the mention of sea green just, just absolutely triggers massive anxiety. I can't, I told her so many times. I told her so many times you can't do that. Not next to the water. It looks terrible. It will clash with everything. It will clash with every dress that you have and your skin. Oh my God, why would she do that? Well, and I'll this, be honest. Uh, now she's chosen, say, uh, you know, to decorate with blood. I'm gonna oh. approach the the scratch marks in the blood. Mm -hmm. Are they positioned in such a way that someone was trying to get out? Uh, no, it looks like they were digging from the house into the side, into the back wall here to find this natural tunnel. Okay. Mm. Um, can I tell what kind of creature was it that was doing the digging? Um, give me a nature check. And, and, um, I might be able to help you with that. Or, or Larry, sorry, steal myself. I was trying to say the name. Or Larry, yeah, you can you can assist with that. Yeah, absolutely. Or you can okay. try try your own check. I think I have an idea what it is. Uh, so I got a twenty six. I got a twenty one. Okay. Excellent. Nice. Wow. Um, definitely. We confer for a moment over <laughs> yeah, to the side. Yeah, yes. We had all on our own. <laughs> oh look, yeah, this one here. Um, yeah, definitely humanoid. Um, Perhaps a couple of different races, uh, different sizes, but uh, yeah, like like human fingers, kind of you know, that normal hands. Maybe not a claws. total of sixteen different people. Um, yeah, there's it's, yeah, there are sixteen distinct like, claw marks. Maybe a household <laughs> weight. <laughs> maybe maybe thirty-two because they've got both hands. <laughs> thirty-two. Okay, okay right. Sets, okay, so sixteen uh, sets of distinct claw marks. You know, marks. I'm really good with statistics. <laughs> so from what we can tell, um. This house was definitely, along with some of the people in town, that, that they were used. Mm. I'm sorry, Zinni. I know you're. Uh, that's a soft spot for you being used in all of that. Uh, but it seems that uh, that's what's happening here. And down there, we can stop whatever used these people. Yeah. I'm gonna well? grab my rowdy club. I'm gonna <laughs> cast slide on it. Let's do this. I'm gonna walk into. Yeah, Zyni, Zyni, Zyni Dark is going along with the constable. Yeah. Like, okay. right after that, he's like, we can't let this happen. Okay. okay. Well, this looks like fun. <laughs> so Gally starts... sighs a little bit and has to move Reginald a little bit as there's now a lot more blocking going on, but we'll also follow. <laughs> you, you make your way down into this jagged natural stone um, um, tunnel, which is curling down beneath the mansion. And um, you feel it getting cooler, you know, away from the heat of the sun. Um, Gally, this feels very nice for you to be back down in these uh, subterranean places. But you do start to hear something echoing up from the depths. Is that some is that some kind of chanting? You hear voices. No. Intoning something. Do y'all hear that? Reginald, go into recording mode, please. I want a copy of that for later. Oof. <laughs> uh, let me, uh, let me see. Uh, how far do the voices sound? Like, if we just round the corner, they'll be there? Like, how no, close no, are see, they? No, it's, it's just echoing. The way it's echoing and, and uh, dissipating through the space, you think it's a little ways off yet. So you okay. um, you start to cautiously make your way down here, you know, through, and it opens up into caverns from time to time. You're widening, and there are um, craggy um, outcroppings and uh, stalactites reaching down from the roof, 
and a rather uneven um, surface here. As you seem to be moving down beneath the um, beneath the river itself, maybe back mm. towards the bridge. Anyone? Um, I know some of you are scouts and, and have nature and stuff. You kind of get that feeling of your direction, and you think this is definitely going back towards the um, the bridge and beneath the riverbed um, itself. I were far enough down, maybe under the water. Perhaps we should um. You start to get Minecraft particle effects. Oh, <laughs> coming through. Be quiet. The chanting getting louder. Um, as you get closer, yes. I'd yes. like to scout ahead, seeing that it's my subclass. I'm gonna nod to them nice, all and smart. just. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Are you gonna do that stealthily? Check. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Yeah. Yes. Watching my light ray, uh, my my light range as well. <laughs> Give myself away there. I have a, a, a technical question. So the river mm. or the bridge went over the river. Yes. Even though it's headed back toward, there was water under the bridge, literally. Yes. Okay, great. That'll be a 22 stealth. Okay, nice. Yes, you go slowly forward and you reach a point where it opens up into a much wider cavern and there is a ravine that f makes its way through this about 20 feet across and there is a natural stone bridge that crosses it. You know, um, horizontal and just, just uh, flat across. And there is a, a wind that gusts through, and it seems a subterranean sibling to the Kingfisher River seems to gush through here, and you can hear the sound of the water going through um, far, far below. And you notice something interesting. You hear from a cycle on the opposite side voices hushed in conversation and movement, and you quickly duck behind a stalagmite and uh, hide yourself away there with that stealth check. And do you see... Is that another group of adventurers? You see... a female elf, a female halfling, uh, a female dragonborn, and a female gnome, an all-female group here. Um, as this, uh, this cleric, fighter, rogue, and barbarian-looking group it's a very, very balanced party from this random generator. <laughs> Everything is randomly generated. <laughs> um, you see them um, stealthily move out of the tunnel, but they're no match for your investigative talents. And you hear them muttering to themselves, Look, Tamsin, you've done well so far. Please try and stay quiet. We're going to get rid of this menace. These foul elephants will not ruin this town. Oh. Odessa. And you see the dragonborn rogue looking um, character turn. Yeah, boss? We don't want anything coming to surprise us from the back. Get rid of that, will you? And you see this um, elf cleric looking um, person point towards the stone bridge. And you see. As that's happening, I'm gonna reveal myself and say, hold up! Oh no. Agents, quickly, Odessa, and Calm Odessa yourself. just goes. Certainly, hey, clink, 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 we're here clink, for the clink. same reason. Give me a dexterity saving throw, as there is a huge explosion. <laughs> oh as no! Whatever oh, Odessa threw oh, no. towards the stone bridge detonates. I love it. Okay, um, let me get it. dexterity. Mm -hmm. Okay, luckily I have a plus six to this. Hey. Oh, that is oh. that'll be a ninety. 19, excellent. Do you have evasion? Uh, boy, I will check that. That's a level 7 ability, so... Yeah, oh, okay. Seven. Thank you. Mm. Okay, so you take half... Again, my dice are not doing very well. Um, you take half of 12, so six, 6. 6 fire damage as this explosive device goes off and you hear a cracking and shattering and crumbling sound as the stone bridge <laughs> tumbles and falls. And the cleric... You see clearly bearing marks of the same trickster god as yourself, chuckles to herself. <laughs> and they quickly make their way towards the chanting in the tunnel going off the other side. You shall not steal our prize. No one wins if we don't stand together. We'll do just fine. 
I'm assuming I'm, at this point we'll. I mean, I'm yeah. rushing on up. If yeah, I, I think I'm. Yeah, yeah, the moment I hear the yeah. Everyone catches up. Yeah, you will catch up okay. with with uh, Consta. And Consta's uh, like keeled over at this point. He's got like shards <laughs> of stone in his cheek and his face as well. <laughs> He looks like Bruce Willis from Die Hard. <laughs> yeah. Why'd you take your boots off? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so the stone beneath my feet. Yes. Um, Wenless. Yes. Um, as I as I head up, um, I'm just going. I still have the bottle of champagne with me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just going to look around at the situation. I'm going to notice like there's a little a little explosion that happened. Um, you know, look at Constor and just be like, are you, are you, are you, are you still functional? Let's, uh, I'm still functional, just a little stoned up. Hey. Okay, well here, I'm gonna hand him a bottle of champagne. Be like, <laughs> hold this for me, have a sip, you'll feel better in just a moment. I hold on just on a minute, wings. please. <laughs> yeah, perfect, perfect. Now, There's, when, when those, as, yes, please, sir. I'm going, so I'm going to, Grab, you notice that Wendless just pulls out this red carpet. It's like, I normally use this for entrances. I suppose this would count as one. Excuse me, please, excuse me. I need some space. <laughs> and he's going to set down the carpet and he's going to say, runway bitches. And <laughs> just the carpet immediately extends 60 feet creating a bridge across this thing. And you watch as just perfectly, you see him just stride out onto the carpet, do a a fabulous three point turn in the center to show off the hemline of the robe and then continue onward, um, waving down the other adventuring crew and being like- They've disappeared ahead. They've gone into the tunnel. You're all terrible and I hate you. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so all of you make your way across this very convenient red carpet bridge. And I hobble across, (laughs) dripping with the the sparkling wine and blood all over this beautiful carpet. (laughs) (laughs) And when else you you wrap that up and uh, you you make a mental note to prestigitate that later. And you make your way into the tunnel towards the sound of the chanting. Now, carrying on for a while, soon you see the huddled shapes of this other group up ahead and they're peering into a wider cavern with flickering torchlight illuminating and silhouetting them from as from your vo- view- viewpoint what do you do does it look like whatever is in the cavern has not noticed them or us um yeah the chanting is carrying on as as uh, un- you know unabated so it seems to stay carrying on i want to be honest with all of you Maybe we should just let them die first and then we can just say we did it. <laughs> now, normally I would agree with you, dear, but they did mention something about elephants, I think. Um, we can't afford to have them get turned. So whatever direction they head, we should head in a different direction, flanking whoever's up there and see if the two parties together. What are the cult, like, what are these people chanting look like? Do they look like townspeople? As you catch up the other party um start and they draw their weapons but then they see it's you and they're like Ugh. fine do this together not until you heal me mm-hmm. you blew a, a bridge up in my face yeah you you did that the elven I see that we follow the same patron uh, god Perhaps the elven I... trickster yeah the elven trickster um cleric um Exceptionally beautiful, long brown hair and light amber eyes that just meet meteors. Um, she steps forward with her studded leather armor, um, puts away the hand axe, and says, Look, there's been a prophecy about Sharkfin Bridge and the people of Saltmarsh that I am here to put an end to. If you are willing to aid us in that, then yes. I can hear. I said you. that before you blew a bridge up in my face. Okay, 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 okay. Voices. Sorry. Inside, inside voices. Okay. Force, but, but could you force of habits, I'm afraid. This pro- prophecy. Just pretend. Just pretend I have bad memory. Yeah. What prophecy? You get um, six HP back as she reaches out and um, you. cures you. Um, Amazing. How's the report? Regains his composure. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? What? What prophecy are you talking about? That's um. 
and you see um, the dragonborn rogue who threw the device, Consta, um, a uh, willowy, black-scaled dragonborn, um, steps forward. It's no good. The prophecy's too far along. We're gonna, we're gonna be too late. Maybe, maybe with increased numbers we can get it done. Hopefully, their leader isn't too powerful. What is the prophecy? There is said to be a fossilized elder brain here in these caverns. They found it. They're digging it out. They're going to revive it. And all of Salt Marsh shall be consumed. My family will be consumed. And the cleric, Iria, steps forward. Now, Odessa, it's okay. We have these people. A fair split of any rewards, I promise. Let us get this done. And you turn, and inside you see long, live um, figures with sweeping robes, with purple trim. Uh, Wendless is quite, quite nice. Um, good, good designs and things. Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty refined. Mm -hmm. Much better than Very your, well uh, made. your much better than your cousin's taste. Um, yeah. Speaking of which, you do see a Medusa, not hiding away at all anymore, and that doesn't seem to bother the other 15 townsfolk who are also here, and it is them that you can hear chanting, facing this torchlit um, excavation in the far wall, where you can see the edges of a large brain-like fossil that is carefully being eroded and um, revealed by the magics of this ritual and you see a even more grandly dressed mind flayer their tentacles and elongated head focused intently on the wall leading the ceremony and you um see wenless your cousin's hair the snakes writhing around almost in a rhythmical kind of swaying motion snap around two or three of them looking back towards where you are and they kind of curl down to willow song's ears i just looked at everybody i was like shit that gossipy bitch saw us <laughs> and she stands up still chanting and like kind of glassy eyed and she's like st starts to move back and you do see uh, amongst the villagers that are here there are some dragonborn with very similar coloration and black scales to Odessa in this other group. And she starts to, while still facing the wall and chanting, she just like slowly starts to walk backwards towards you all. As she's doing that, I'm going to start to whisper to Reginald. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Reginald, would you please go into stealth mode and get as close as possible to that um, fossilized brain? Thank you very much. And I'm going to put my tiny humunculus down mm -hmm. and I'd like him to start to stealthily make his way around through you know dodging and weaving and ducking until he can get as close as possible to the uh the, the stone brain okay. I know that might take a little while I don't know how far away that is uh yeah that's fine um it's about 100 feet across the cavern um, okay you said that that, uh, that there are these dragonborns that look the same there are some there's a few dragonborn in the group that look similar to Odessa yes before I'm fully noticed, I like run my hands across my face and back through my hair, and I'm mm -hmm. gonna cast disguise self to look just nice. like them. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, yes, Reginald just reaches up and boops himself on the nose on, uh, with a paw, and then his body starts to shimmer and almost camouflage itself against the rocks. And you just hear the faintest of. <laughs> so interestingly enough, uh, because he's a humunculus, he mm. actually has a fly speed. Oh, so, yes. so I the... imagine what happens is all four of his paws are yes. tracked up and he just hovers you know that... and then it's just yeah, that, think... that uh, <laughs> loaf of a corgi, yeah. but it's tiny, <laughs> the tiny corgi is just... Right. I think um... the images I've seen are of cats, but you know the, that image like from the front of the cat just like, like looks like it's hovering, there's like no legs in sight at all. It just looks yep. like that, yeah, and it's just like... Mm -hmm. I'd like <laughs> to... I'd like to stealth and get in position, and mm -hmm. I'd also look to, like to look over to uh, Zylari, uh, Zy Zyralai, uh, and uh, say, <laughs> "May the trickster walk with you." 
and uh, I'm going to reach out and the, the recessed pools of shadow of my hand are going to start to coalesce up my arm and then start to join and um, sort of enshroud um, Zaya as well. Excellent. Uh, that You'll get blessing of the trickster, so Fantastic. I'm going to see if we can just like go and like, get ready for prime striking position on the Illithid. I'm going to point over towards the the, uh, the Mind Flayer and say that one first. All right. In, res- in response, I will put my hand out as well and say and with you and I will cast where did that ah one sec <laughs> so somewhere this is a humble word spell yay uh, I will cast veil of dusk on consta let's go nice. so you get advantage on your stealth check and you get yes. a plus one to your AC oh my gosh as a Hell shadowy yes. veil comes over you and softens your the sound emanating from you and oh, I love it so much gives you a bit more a bit more of a stealth boost um, and you said they're they're like a hundred feet away um, the cabin is a hundred feet across that they they are about eighty feet away mm-hmm. um, all right there's as I've been sort of like casting this this fine familiar but have I had enough time to actually get a familiar going yes indeed what what is your, what yeah. form does your familiar take? Um, so my familiar takes the form of just a very sort of like like fluid looking bird of paradise that just has a very long tail that sort of glitters and I'm like no 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 shh, 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 shh. and you see the glitter sort of fade from it it's like that's right sweetness I need you to do something for me and I'm gonna send it over towards the illithid um as stealthily as possible, sort of hovering maybe like 20 or 30 feet above the illithid. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna okay. roll as well. Yep, please. Okay. I wonder if this will work with my uh, with my background here. I'm gonna try. Nope. <laughs> I can't see my fabulous <laughs> snake here. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> um. Well, even with advantage, it wasn't great. It's a 14. Okay. So you start to sneak through. Um, I will give you advantage just because they are so en- engrossed in this um, ritual. So triple advantage? Because I already had advantage. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no! You should have said it. But you, yeah, have, no. you have your inspiration from deck. Oh, I want to really save that for, like, this could be it. Yes, it was really important. Can I sure. use it again, then, as, like, like a lucky sort of situation? Did you drop into it? Did you roll a one as a halfling? <laughs> no, I didn't. It was a seven and an eleven uh, uh, with a plus three modifier. Oh no, I'm hungry. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we have seven elevens in Japan too. Oh. Um, okay. <laughs> um, so um, you, um, yeah, you start to make your way through. Hopefully, hoping that the ritual is distracting enough for them. Yeah. Um, and as everyone is starting to prepare and fan out slowly, Wenlos, your cousin Willow Song moves closer and she does that horrible annoying thing she does where she speaks through one of her snakes so while still looking forward and pretending to chant one of the snakes turned around Wendos what are you doing here? You shut your mouth when you talk to me that way honey Shut shut my mouth and talk to you? What are you doing? Blathering about you idiot you know I hate it when you talk with those goddamn snakes. They're terrible. It's just gross. They look with their nasty little tongues. It's just, it's disgusting, and you should be ashamed. They're adorable. Don't you dare say that kind of thing. Oh, <laughs> what do no. you want? I'm trying you... to kill an illithid. What are you doing here? I, I have the situation under control. Oh, do you? Because it seems like they are about to unearth an elder brain. That's what it looks like here. Does that what it look like to your to your face that's facing forward and not the 16 faces that are staring at me? Look. This is an unfortunate turn of events. Little do they know that my abilities, my my personal traits uh, help me from turning into those poor enslaved folk of this darling little town. Now, please, allow me to control the situation. Uh, if you tell me I what think... the first... 
Yes. Oh, I was going to say, Zyni Dark kind of steps forward. Uh, I'm, I'm imagining he's just kind of been hanging, trying to figure out what to do. And uh, he's going to step forward and uh, tug on the robes of the Medusa uh, and say, um, excuse me, ma'am, uh, this situation, are these people, I, I have something that might be able to help. Um, some time ago, we had a, 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 a board meeting, well, not board meeting, but, a, you know, a group meeting at the company that really got out of hand. Uh, some people were starting to get, it, tempers were running high, and I have an ability, uh, I might be able to help if these people are maybe being controlled, I might be able to help with that. Splendid. I hope you're able to save them. <sighs> yes. Uh, does that factor into your plan at all? Um, oh, I mean, survivors, well, fine, I suppose. <laughs> yes, yes, it's okay. Yes. Okay. Now, when is Should I start it now or when everything starts going horribly wrong? Um, whenever you feel is best, dear. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, I think does, uh, um, I, what's going to happen next is uh, everybody who was not in, me in the immediate vicinity, but who is uh, still within, let me see the distance. Um, oh, only 30 feet. Well, anybody who's within 30 feet of me will hear like a weird, uh, will hear my voice in their head, along with underneath you hear just like a weird uh, echoey ethereal voice going like, <laughs> uh, with me just explaining my plan. Yeah. Uh, to people saying, hey, are you okay with me trying this as like a preliminary measure? Or would you prefer that I do it as more of uh, when things kick off? A loaf of bread, a bottle of milk, and a stick of water. A stick of butter. <laughs> of free bread, a bottle of milk, and a stick of butter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, you start to start um, to, to, do, to create that effect. Yes, when else? You all can. I think you can all. Re, um, you might be able to respond. Let me see if you can respond. Um. This is this is a. Uh, wait. Yep. Yeah. Each of you can speak telepathically as long as whether you're within five or right. two miles of me, so you can oh. respond. I'm just I'm just basically I'm... taking a quick poll. Fabulous. Um, I'm just gonna be like, oh, do whatever you need to. Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna look at my at my cousin and just be like, okay, do you remember the spring cotillion that we had over in Arborea? Um, <clears throat> let's do that. And what she remembers is that um, Wendless had been kicked out. Um, because he'd recently broken up with one of the people over there and people were uncomfortable and it really sucked and he didn't get to go to this party. So he actually like hid underneath the bustle of his cousin as she went in there mm -hmm. and just sort of trailed in and that's how he snuck in. Is she, is she amenable to this? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> so yes. She's wearing one of those same kind of gaudy, but fun, you know, useful in this <laughs> in this instance gowns. Well, that's what she is. She's she's useful. She's not interesting. <laughs> she's just useful. And you start to sneak forward um, with her assistance, and you hear her um, kind of muttering to you as she's going. <sighs> it is such. A happy circumstance, isn't it? <laughs> Don't you love how these things work out? Oh, I do. This should be a very interesting story to tell at Father's latest party. Mm. <laughs> Though, could you please get some champagne and not sparkling wine in your secret room next time? Yes. So nice how things work out. Um, The chance I'm... at yeah. so much power and... You know what? I am so sick of being 147,000 and first in line for the throne. Yes. And she whooshes up her dress and she calls out, Um, Cephalosk! And the mind, mind, mind flare at the front of the room <laughs> spins around, his tentacles whipping ground. And as he looks back, she's like, We have visitors. And he says, 
You, where have you come from? You shall not stop this, and you will not stop our purpose. And, and in um, Zinni Dark's head, I believe yes. at this point you hear uh, Galley said, "Oh, I believe that is the uh, alert that you were waiting for." <laughs> yeah, um, right. Has Reginald made it to the the, the brain in the wall? Uh, yes, he has. And um, Willow Song, um, you know, kicks you out from under her skirts when lost, and all the snakes turn around and stick their tongues out at you, and she walks over smugly next to the Mind Flayer's side. Now, the um, priestess in the other group um, of uh, of adventurers here, um, Iria, turns to you, Consta. <sighs> look, for Odessa's sake, we will look after the villagers and keep them out of harm's way. You get that one. She points at the uh, the main the main uh, priest kind of guy. All right, hell yeah. Okay, so I Can had, I... I, oh, had, sorry, had I had stealthed up uh, yes. during that that encounter, so I am near there. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, now, and then I'm we. Like, uh, we unfortunately do not have time to plunge ourselves into no! a full D and D combat, but we will abstract it. And I would like okay. each of you to tell me which of your skills or items or abilities that you would like to use as you attempt to combat and attack this Illithid oh. and their this mind flayer arcanist and their um, machinations here. So. Just have a little think for a moment there, okay? You see, um, as you're doing this, the other adventuring group, this uh, elven cleric, halfling fighter, dragonborn rogue, and gnome barbarian. Another gnome barbarian, <laughs> Gally. <laughs> right, was it Gally? You had a level in barbarian? Oh yes, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. Mm. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yes, another another gnome barbarian here, after your own heart. Um, but um, they, they go charging forward and engage the villagers but they do it in a way that you know they're trying to subdue them not kill them mm -hmm. um especially and odessa is trying she can see her shouting at her her family members it's like snap out of it come on get out and they they um spring into combat here much like the uh, the opening cinematics of the Vok machina cartoon and <laughs> um they spring into action as you um spring your various stealth options and hidden things and abilities galley what do you do to combat this Arcanist? There is going to be a, a checks and balances moment here as we see as various things may call for checks and see if you're successful. Um, well, let's I see think, how this works out. I think the first thing, Galley's actually going to pause and wait for Zinni Dark to do what uh, he wanted to do first. But then Absolutely. as soon as he does that, mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of my things are all going to proc. So. <laughs> okay, we should come back to that then. <laughs> Thank you. Consta from Stealth, what do you do? All they right. have not noticed I'm you. going to before I go down there. I'm going to call on my my patron god as well. Protect me from good and evil, because I am your agent. And then I'm going to cast protection of good and evil on me, and I'm going to go down and I'm just bringing my rowdy club as much as I can, cracking skulls, okay. going after this main give lizard. Me, so sneak attack. Um, give me two checks. Give me two checks. Yep. Give me um, um, a religious check first. Religious. Uh, okay, what am I sitting on? Ooh. That's a 17. 17, excellent. Okay, your god heeds your prayer and imbues your form with the um, trickster um, uh, magic. And you almost dance between the shadows and the rowdy club lashes out sneak attacks here and there as the other, there are a couple of other illithid guards as well, move forward to protect the Arcanist. Oh, wow. But oh. you leap into attacks with them oh. and attacking them on, on the one side there is a surprise. Wenlos, what do you do? Your accursed cousins um. betrayed you. So there is, is, is this like a single round type thing or is this like a multiple round? Um, just, yeah, describe, like, what, what would you do in this combat? <laughs> so the first thing, so the first thing is send my, uh, send my familiar over to the elder brain and cast an arcane lock on the actual stone around it mm -hmm. so that they can no longer excavate anything. And oh, then... I was going to be much more direct than that. Then <laughs> 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 just beautifully, I mean, just incredibly gracefully, with balletic ease, just trapes over towards <laughs> um, towards this this you know okay. this terrible, terrible Medusa, just Kratos. <laughs> just Kratos. look at her and just be like, listen to me, listen to me. 
you're just one more bitch I gotta step on. And just use all of his wow. monk attacks to start tearing yes. all of her hair out. <laughs> it's a bit of a He's done with that. We literally, we literally grab. use her. Absolutely. Yes. And then if if he can, pick her up and slam her into the illithid <laughs> that, wow. that he's standing okay. next to. First, <laughs> give, give me a, an, arcane, uh, an arcana check for the lock. See how well that, okay. that takes. All right. Fabulous. Let's... Uh, as Let's you do see, that, you see the Arcanist. Oh, fantastic. Okay. You see the Arcanist Elithus has turned and is frantically casting some sort of spell to more crudely, quickly excavate the brain from the rock surface as he's reaching out there, desperately trying to speed up the process beyond what this chanting was delicately doing. And as um, the brain gets chiseled away and starts to shift and move in the wall, you see parts of it exposed to the air start to become more tissue-like and start to undulate and revive as it is dug out of this surface. But you cast your spell and it locks in place, immovable, and the Arcanist Not just snarls, his tentacles bristling. He's like, nah, what have you done? And it is locked in place, ready for whatever Galley has in store. You <laughs> shall pay. And Olarie, what are you doing? Okay. Uh, well, I'm still. I still look like a dragonborn. I'm kind of hidden. And as I see the mm, spikes yeah. start to kick off, uh, the warlock in me goes, <laughs> "No, thank you." Uh, but because I have to use this awesome magic item, I have. I have to just have a moment. Go for uh, it. You see, there's a moon-shaped tattoo on their hand, and as they kind of sling it forward, a scythe. <laughs> comes out of the tattoo uh, on their hand. And then there's that contemplative moment of, did I get into combat? Ah, I think I had a better idea. And I sneak off to the side, dressed as, or uh, disguised as this, these dragonborns. And I, since we are in fact under the river, begin to repeatedly cast shatter on the ceiling. Oh. I'm about to flood this cavern. Ain't nobody else coming down here again. Fan Bring the rings! Fantastic, yes. fantastic. I love it. Okay. Oh, I'm going to be able to help I, with you, too. I was going to yep. say, I hope you all can swim! <laughs> <laughs> Just over and over again until all that shatter damage breaks through the ceiling, hopefully to start flooding the chamber. Excellent. Please, um, please give me uh, an arcana check plus your, uh, your spellcasting modifier. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to roll... Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to roll the flat arcana check. Okay, not too bad. So that was a 13 plus a 5, so an 18. Nice. Okay, so yeah, you start to use these shatter spells, and it just cracks your stalactites, falling, cracking off the ceiling, falling to the ground, shattering amongst the people and, and illithids alike. And you continue with that as this um, battle is raging around you. Zinidak, what are you doing? Okay, so I'm going to... Uh grab my tinker's tools hooked up to the the pipes of haunting again uh and this time my entire face appears to be like drawn inward almost as if like there's a black hole behind my head that is just sucking all of like the very color and light of my face just so into it <laughs> and out of wow. out of from behind my head uh all of these tentacles emerge uh and start waving while everyone who is all of the all of the chanting people as well as the elithids uh hear a lullaby being sung in deep speech uh and i'm going to cast calm emotions on all of those people Perfect. uh which if any of them are charmed uh i can suppress any effect causing them to be charmed or frightened uh Fantastic. and yeah just trying to hopefully re re release those people from being uh influenced by the elithids as well as just cause the elithids to be like yeah bro let's chill out uh for a little bit <laughs> um okay so yes you just see um Zinidark just kind of raise up um, tentacles of her own, not unlike the Illithids, swirling about almost in a hypnotic, dreamy pattern. And for a moment, it's like the battle calms, and you all hear this song, this melodic music, just singing and echoing through the space. A beautiful, calming effect. There's a lull, and the townspeople sway to a new rhythm away from the chanting of the ritual away from the control of the illithids and they 
one by one start to shake their heads their eyes blink and they look around some of them with recognition at Odessa the family members Odessa what on earth what is that and they point to the illithids and they clearly seem to have no recollection of what is going on here and then as soon as it was gone, boom, the rattle just swirls back around you and the clash of weapons, the shatter spells, boom, boom, on the ceiling as Gally <laughs> jumps into action here. Uh, Gally's been standing there kind of twirling her, um, the screwdriver in her hand, waiting, watching as all of this is going on, as, as this calm emotions goes off and Reginald floats into the perfect position just between where this brain is and where the arca arcanist is for the mind flare. And she stops twirling the screwdriver and, and says, ah, perfect position. And presses a little button because she can cast spells through her homunculus and I'm gonna cast Thunder Wave, which yes. ah. um, will help out the constable as that pressure wave hitting the um, hitting the elephants should knock them forward and prone. Also, it should hit the uh, the rocks that are right there um, and the brain. Should do mm -hmm. a lot of damage to the brain. And oh yeah, um, the the shattering that's going on above us. Uh, I'm gonna help out with that a little bit. So uh, you watch as Reginald's little tiny corgi eyes flash and then boom. <laughs> yeah. um, so just hovering there, his that... legs up to a little corgi loaf. Still looking at this, you just see those eyes go red, and with a woof, this yes. boom, and this thunder wave goes off, and another one boom towards the ceiling, another one towards the illithid arcanist, yep. who's knocked onto their knees, growling. Oh, perfect! In They're like, no, what is this? And I'm gonna grab it by the tentacles while it's prone and bring up the rowdy club. What? <laughs> okay, nice. As and Gall Gally, yes. Yeah, as that goes off, I have stowed the, um, I've stowed that, and I've pulled out from somewhere under the dress that I was wearing a spear, a glowing spear, and I look over at Percival, my bull terrier, and I say, Percival, uh, proper rage protocols, please, uh, let us go into battle. And Percival, being my eldritch cannon, is going to trot on up, sit, open his maw and you see just a giant eldritch force <laughs> ballista <laughs> out of his maw. <laughs> he will be with a bonus action shooting at things as I will go into a very proper rage. And proper as rage. a proper rage, proper rage which yeah. means I just look very stern with my um, glowing spear that is my infused spear. And I'm going to go help the constable dispatch of this one yes. as quickly yes. as possible. Now get into flanking and just like start stabbing away God, God, in my this... tiny little Nerf Neblin form with is my big oh. Is this one of those I'm not angry, I'm disappointed rages? That's worse. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it's more like, look what you have made me do. <laughs> okay. And now you will oh. die. Fantastic. Well, while my Eldritch Force Ballista puppy is going off, while <laughs> um, Percival and Reginald are going off in two different directions. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and I, I do give Zinni Dark a, a little nod as I stab my spear into the. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, yeah, all of these effects are just echoing and flashing around the chamber. Zorale. Well, at this point. <laughs> I think. <laughs> this is all happening simultaneously. Oh, this, is, this is all happening but... simultaneously, don't worry. I, I, I think I think what uh, Zarelai is doing is uh, being sort of on a battlefield now is he's finally happy on this adventure. He's, he's not really <laughs> he's, he's not really not really known why he was selected. And then battle began, and he realised ah this is where I'm supposed to be. And the majority of his involvement is going to be. Um, almost pirouetting in circles with joy with his crimson tide sickle in one hand slashing around in circles whilst downing one of the bottles of sparkling wine he picked up on the way down <laughs> in the other hand gracefully cutting down anyone who approaches and once the bottle's done he will throw it at the face of one of the illithids and then just start firing off eldritch blasts continually nice. spinning 
Okay. Uh, until <laughs> you, you would like to see prone even prone as well. Yeah, even yep. even with yeah. ones that you miss, they are knocked prone by the blast of this enhanced magical energy, and that helps you as you follow up with your. I really love the term crimson tidesicle. <laughs> ah, like sickle. A, tides, oh, oh, sickle. Okay, I see. <laughs> ah. <laughs> it's a delicious frozen treat. Yes, as you will see, Zilrelay in their elements starts to twirl and dance almost. Wenlos, you're reminded of some of your ballet um, abilities and performances. Absolutely. <laughs> and when I when I see that that bottle being thrown, I would love to just grab it in midair and just smash it against my cousin's face and stab <laughs> her in the neck. Absolutely. Give me give me give me um, a um, a dexterity check just quickly. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Let's let's I, let's do it. Just, I can just, for the, just for the shits and giggles, I rolled a performance check to see if I could maintain the spinning and I got Please. 23. Nice. <laughs> Absolutely. Very glorious. Impressed. Glorious. You found that perfect you look spot. Amazing. You found that perfect spot to look at so that every time you turn, you're you're focused yep. right yes. there and your head whips around, you never get dizzy. Great. This yep. is not my first rodeo. <laughs> or ballet, uh, apparently. I send, I send my light over to you to like light you perfectly as you're doing all of this. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. So, yes, as this all is happening, um, the other adventuring team is quickly gesturing the villagers out back towards the tunnel, back towards the way you came. And they um, are running out, and Olarie, you turn to the others, and you're like, um, probably time to leave soon, as you start to yeah. have more of an uh, effect up here, and you uh, see... Uh, mm. Grab your snorkels and your fins! We're about to go swimming! <laughs> and, um... I can't oh. swim! <laughs> Percival, what? Reginald, uh, we're going into underwater mode. <laughs> okay. now, you... If you can't swim, now's the time to run! <laughs> Yes, you turn tail. The guards are defeated. The Arcanist is down and heavily injured after Galley's raging attack and all of the various magical effects flying around this room. You turn and run, and you hear a snarl behind you as the Arcanist Mind Flayer turns to you. You may have stopped me today, but this is not the last you'll hear of me. No! No! Just as with a crash and a creaking and a shattering, the ceiling gives way and a deluge of water just tumbles down into the room. All of you just go belting along the tunnel. When thus you run to the front as you reach that chasm once more with the cry of, what was the magic word again? Is it runway bitches? <laughs> runway bitches! <laughs> the red carpet <laughs> unfails across the yawning chasm in the cavern. All of you quickly make your way across and just as a torrent of water snapping at your heels explodes from the tunnel behind you, you all quickly run across this runway, voguing just a little, and you get to the other side <laughs> and with a flourish, Wenlos rips it and it wraps back up and into his that. position. Yes. At that moment, I will also cast a gust of wind to stop as much of the water coming Fantastic. from as as I can. <laughs> Speaking I of, yeah. Gally, yes? <laughs> I will join you in that. Um, I, I stow my my spear and I pull out my wind fan. Indeed. Ah, yes. Yes. Uh, when loss, as you start to do that, I pull up behind you and I just, with a very satisfying clack, open up this fan and start to fan and we'll cast <laughs> literally <laughs> gust of <laughs> yep, gust of wind to help help nice. uh, just support uh, his wind. Yep. I look I, I look at you and I was like, ooh. Okay, I see you now. I see you. <laughs> and you're seeing here this, for you. This I'm magical... proud of that. <laughs> uh, seeing this, seeing this, Zyni Dark is going to uh, activate his Tinker's Tools slash pipe once again, and the wind starts to blow out of the pipe and warp space around him and others. And I, uh, I'm gonna cast Warding Wind. Uh, to also help us with that. So there's just okay. like, it's so, a soundless, weird space warping wind. With I these various arcane yes! magical <laughs> gusts buffeting the water back, keeping it back <laughs> enough just in time for you to clear as the magic subside and the water <laughs> breaks through. It cascades in a beautiful waterfall over the edge of the chasm down oh, to I'm the Kingfisher's so Twin River. And there's a small... <laughs> 
a small rainbow from uh, some the magic lights that people have up dancing around um, as the cleric and the other team cancels the illumination here for the villagers and the light for some reason refracts through the water and a, and a beautiful arcing rainbow goes across the falls and you all hey, look our treasures down there <laughs> <laughs> And um, you quickly make your way back up into Willow Song's gaudy mansion. And you burst out of the doors back into the streets of Saltmarsh. And you see on those streets fisherfolk, farmers, merchants, standing, almost looking distracted, lost around the streets, shaking their heads, massaging their temples, released it seems from strange magic some strange effect that has been clasping at them and controlling them from the depths beneath sharkfin bridge and you hear a hey hey the bridge doesn't hurt no more and you see somebody <laughs> dancing up and down on the bridge i don't feel sick i can open my shop again Hey! <laughs> and party on the bridge! <laughs> oh. <laughs> bridge party! Yeah. Bridge party! <laughs> and the townsfolk Reginald, in the immediate... activate disco mode, please. And <laughs> now yes! Reginald will start to reflect all of the lights, and you'll hear Percival, the cannon will go back into his maw, and now you'll just hear a... <laughs> <laughs> it's a and... subwoofer. <laughs> hey, yes. Oh, oh my hey. God. Hey, well done, well done. <laughs> Top notch, you win. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> I take my hat off to you. Yeah, I don't have one, but I take it off anyway. <laughs> and Amazing. you join the joyous villagers on the bridge. After a while, there is a tug, um, Zilrele, and you see a very substantial, non ethereal looking forest gnome with an angry bird on top of a staff. Well done. Tip top. I knew I could trust you. <laughs> now, as promised, um, gather your friends and you kind of gather them up from the various celebrations that are going on on the bridge here. And you each make a request for your reward. Have a little think about that. As Zinniduck, a pensive, very sleepy headed looking um, human druid, comes. Um, Hello, um, my name is Vakel Dornfang. How do you remember Um, I was, um, I was told that you were looking for my master's assistant. Uh, well, yes, uh, we, well, we just, uh, we just did the job, and so I believe, according to the terms of the unwritten agreement, we should now receive our just reward. Um, and he, he reaches out and you see his hands are covered in like picks and um, claw scratches um, and he, he sees you like noticing he's like oh, parrot and problems um, and he passes you like a, a, a date kind of sized berry he's like um, this should uh, help you oh well thank you pleasure is this will this turn me black again um Whatever it is that ails you, uh, Mastarafal wasn't too uh, specific, but yes. Oh, okay. It's, it's I'm, the black I'm... or the berry. Uh, <laughs> and, and I pop it in. You pop it I in. You were going to ask if it was gluten free as well. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, for it. is it gluten free? Gluten free. <laughs> it's made out of all natural materials. <laughs> <laughs> and you, um, you do. Um, feel the benefits washing over you, and you are restored to your original form. <laughs> hey! And immediately bereft of all my powers, and I fall to the ground weeping, tears of joy. Uh, I no the to the tentacles the recede horror. and disappear. Um, yes. Um, so yes, um, all of you are gifted treasures or items or knowledge, whatever it is, the reward that you wanted, as Arafort Tan has gathered a great many um, things during his time and travels and experiences with various adventures and he has enjoyed every adventure that these groups can have taken I, him on. Yes, Winless. Can I just, I just want to take a key out and toss it to Zinni Dark and just be like, take it or burn it down. 
You can have it if you'd like, dear. Just think we put in a pool for you. <laughs> no, the ground one at that. Bob, Bob gets off at the side and he kind of looks disappointed. He's like, oh. <laughs> uh, so. Maybe we can make it a public pool so everyone in the city can come and enjoy <laughs> the subterranean <Public>. wonders. <laughs> Uh, considering right. the ring that you got as payment, I think you can afford your own pool. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very I'm true, talking true. to the, yeah, yeah. And after the celebrations have died down and the lanterns and torches of the town are lit as dusk falls and the sun sets over the sword sea, you bid your farewells and Arafor Tan summons those mists once more. Um, everyone, I, I, I'm not sure what uh, situation you left things in, but you will be returned at that exact moment, so oh. be ready. <laughs> really? Uh -oh. oh, perfect. Oh, um, <laughs> can I just Reginald? stay here? I have a mansion. <laughs> I've been given uh, a mansion. If you wish, yes, I have of course. I to admit, gentlefolk, I've grown quite fond of uh, your companionship, and uh, if you ever find yourself in my part of the multiverse, please do drop in. Um, yes. <laughs> You're all invited to the grand opening of the public pool. <laughs> I'm going to pull out. It... Go ahead. He was just going to pull out like all of these, like several envelopes and just very gracefully just flip them at all of you and say, I suppose you can all come to my party if you'd <laughs> like. These will get you entrance up. They're not VIP invitations, but you can get it. Wenlos, I warn, I warn you, my, my Wild Beyond the Witch Lake crew may crash your party. <laughs> also, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Wenlos, I catch the envelope and I open it up and I go, oh, interesting. I already had VIP. Um, Reginald <laughs> Percival, are the two of you still? Oh, good. Your bow ties are in order. And um, <laughs> Galley will walk up to you, Wenlos, and hold out a, the most graceful of elbows as though um, being the, the most elegant escort that you could ever ask for today. <laughs> it would be my honor. Thank you. My dear, it would be mine. <laughs> <laughs> like, take your arm and stride into the mists. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. As you Thank disappear you. off you. into the mist. Hey, massive, massive round of applause. Yay. All of my wonderful players. Thank you so, so much. I never know what's going to happen, but I always think it's going to be a good time as uh, we have this. <laughs> Let me quickly show you this on the stream here. This is what we were working with. Let's make this a bit bigger as we quickly run down here. So here we go. The PCs must destroy a cult of mind flayers. The mood might be grim and gritty. I think only Wenlust thought it was grim and gritty. Um, <laughs> there is a, a well-dressed Medusa who betrays them partway through. They are the cousin of a character. The characters start with the loan or gift of a powerful magical item. They meet a rival group. If things slow down, there is an explosion. Afterwards, there is a religious ritual, druidic, it's close enough, and um, a possible sequel is that an ally becomes the main foe or threat. I don't know what's going to happen there, we shall see. <laughs> but thank you, and I hope that all of you enjoyed that little journey here um, into things, and it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for playing with us today, all of you. It's, it's been absolutely wonderful. Uh, thank you again, and... Um, let me quickly um, let you um, say where people can find you after we are gone today um, on the internets. Lauren, please. I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content coordinator for Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me as uh, Oboe Lauren everywhere. Oboes and Laurens are sold. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Yes. And we have, um, let's see. Um, boop. There is the fabulous um, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms Electron Chest Code for today. Yeah. And there will be new codes nice. tomorrow and on Sunday, so do join us again to get your hands on those, as well as the generous gifts that they have for the giveaway. Thank you so much. Dread. Hi, I'm Josh, the Dread GM, uh, and you can find me anywhere that Dreaded GMs are sold and found <laughs> on the internet as well. Uh, just head on to Twitch, that's where I most spend most of my time, but we are we are, we are all over, over the place. Uh, we, we are a community of loving wholesomeness that tries to celebrate creativity and creative confidence. Uh, if you want to know more about that, head over there, because uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're there all the time. So 
Thank you Thank everyone you for playing today. So I had much. the best time. Yeah, just, Thank just, you. Just awesome. Kyle, please. Um, hi, I am Kyle. Uh, we're Play Nerd Allies. You can find us anywhere there are allies or nerds. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely come over to our Twitch channel. Have a fabulous time. We're absolutely chaotic. Um, we love, we love, love, love storytelling. And if you'd like to see more about Fig, you can check out figforall.org. And I too would like to say, oh my God, so much fun. Any of you, all of you are absolutely welcome at our table anytime. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was. I thought. I thought it was, it was just granted. I, I, I offend. Uh, off, uh, sorry. I offer the same thing. Absolutely. One hundred percent. Absolutely. <laughs> Last time, guys. Dots, please. Hi, friends. I'm a little red dot. Where little red dots can be found, mostly over in the Warrens, over with Cobalt Press, as I'm their current Twitch and content producer. Um, the rest of the time, I've got some podcasts and a few other places that I like to hang around the internet to roll dice and tell stories with awesome people just like these folks. So, thanks for telling stories with me tonight, everybody. Thank you too. And Jeremy, please. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Jeremy Cobb. I am a co host and resident DM for the podcast Three Black Halflings. Uh, you can find Three Black Halflings wherever pods are cast. Uh, you can find me wherever uh, Jeremy's or Cobb's are located and or sold. Uh, and if if you, uh, my my Twitter account is uh, at Jeremy Cobb. That's Cobb with two B's. Excuse me, at Jeremy Cobb. Links one. and chats. Cobb Links and two chats. B's is the number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if you want me to come and play in your game or DM something for you, hit me up. Um, uh, my DMs are open, absolutely. And yeah, thank you so thank much you. for having me. This was a crazy, yeah. wild, wonderful time. I had a <laughs> great time. Absolute pleasure. And Patch, please. I'm Patch. I am the host of Quest Junkies UK, which is Quest Junkie at uh, Quest Junkie. Blah, 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 blah. That <laughs> How do you type that? Quest Junkies <laughs> UK on Twitter and Twitch. Uh, I do homebrew Dungeons and Dragons. We're on hiatus in the minute, but coming back really, really soon. We've got a, a humble weather adventure next week. Featuring the fabulous Phoenix Iwaki himself, um, and yeah, I mean, I I kept forgetting to even talk because I'm so used to just watching you guys on Twitch. <laughs> I, kept I was actually playing as well, so I should have probably contributed a bit more. But no, no, that's great. No, that's great. Uh, it's it's been absolutely terrific, wonderful. Would love to play with you all again. You're all welcome at my table anytime, and yeah, much love. Thank you so much. Okay, and thank all of you for joining us. Thank you for the follows, the hype train, and most um, of all, for all of the wonderful donations, giving us a great start to thank the you, Odyssey. But the Odyssey continues at 8.30 a.m. Roughly nine hours from now, <laughs> um, we will be setting off into our world of Candlekeep Mysteries as our campaign continues into the mountains as they try and see what is going on with the mysterious Book of the Raven. Do join us for that. Then on Sunday evening, 8 p.m. EST, we have our second one-shot roulette. One more of these randomly generated um, journeys of goodness and fun with all of our wonderful guests we have. Satine Phoenix, Jameson Stone, Jason Charles Miller, um, Caustic Phoenix, Phoenix Dice, and Dag, Dead Aussie Gamer as well. I cannot wait to play with them all, and I hope one day I get to play with all of you again. It is an absolute pleasure, and I am looking forward to that day. So, that's the music very nicely <laughs> finishes yeah. there. Thank you, Sirenscape, <laughs> for all of the sound effects and various bits and bobs that allows me to jump around and be very versatile and quickly change different moods and things. It has been an absolute pleasure, my friends. Thank you so much. But that is our story and our session for today. As the mists roil around and take us, we shall see you all again very soon. So, stick around for the raid. If you've got them, let those phoenixes fly. But as we say around these parts, oyasumi nasai. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.